Bob Bunn recovered a fumble at the Penn Hills 35. But before the Panthers' celebration could even die down, Penn Hills was making the play of the game. Mac McArdle's short pass was snagged by B.J. Dinatelli. All B.J. had to do was keep his legs pumping and don't trip over the goal line. 55 yards later, B.J. and his teammates were the ones celebrating in the end zone with a 20 to nothing lead. USC was not about to go down without a fight. The Panthers kept on coming and after making the score 20 to seven, McArdle reared back and connected with Tim Stein all the way down to the two. Cullen Hawkins finished a quick strike drive with a two yard touchdown run. The PAT was blocked, but now it was 20 to 13 Penn Hills with 11.57 to go. USC was driving again, but on third down, Mac McArdle lost the ball and Jeremy George recovered for Penn Hills. Upper St. Clair had one more shot, but with a minute left to play, McArdle's cross field pass was picked off by Victor Strader and the Quad A Championship was on its way to Penn Hills for the first time since 1978. Well, I think it's special for the community. You know, it's been a while. Uh, we were used to winning them uh, like Render does, and uh, it's been since 79. So, you know, we're bringing it back to the community. That's a good feeling for us. For the Foodland High School Sports Show, I'm Kevin Smith. All right, congratulations to Coach Neil Gordon and the Penn Hills Indians on finally winning that Quad A championship and bringing it back to the big house. All right, with all these championships, you know we got to have one heck of a play of the week. And here it is, this week's Reebok Play of the Week. Little did the Penn Hills Indians know how important this play would end up. Leading 14-0, Penn Hills' B.J. Dinatelli picked off Upper St. Clair's Mac McArdle. Dinatelli set sail, racing 55 yards for the touchdown, which proved to be the game winner, as Penn Hills beat Upper St. Clair 20-13 to win the Quad A Whitfield title. And that's this week's Reebok Play of the Week. All right, that was the play of the week. Now, here's this week's Foodland High School Sports Show, Athlete of the Week. Burrow Bucks were not given much of a chance in their double-A title game against Washington, but Burrow proved the skeptics wrong. Quarterback Kevin Horwat turned in a championship performance in leading the Bucks to the Whipple Championship. That's why he's this week's Foodland High School Sports Show, Athlete of the Week. Kevin finished with 126 yards passing, and he rallied Burrow to a dramatic 14-13 win in overtime. Burrow High School's Kevin Horwat, this week's Foodland High School Sports Show, Athlete of the Week. And it wasn't all that bad a week for Washington. We had a chance to pop in the Prexy country to recognize last week's Athlete of the Week, Aaron Gatton of the Wash High football team. Aaron led the Prexies to a 27-0 Whippeal semifinal win over Jeanette a week ago. Washington Foodland owner George Pahio had the honor of presenting Aaron with our Athlete of the Week plaque during a pep rally for the football team. Wash High's Aaron Gatton, last week's Foodland High School Sports Show, Athlete of the Week. All right, that's our show for today, and what a great one it was. Our hats are off to all the Whippeo football champions, and we'll see you in the States, guys. And now, on behalf of the cast and crew here at the Foodland High School Sports Show, I'm Paul Steigerwald, wishing you success in all the challenges you'll face this week. See you next week, everybody.
Pueblo 81009. Barco, remember using this free cap to send for this free and low-cost government publications? Jeff DeVore goes in and Burrow had a 14-7 lead. Washington gets the ball and on their second play, Eugene Woods goes in. It's 14-13, Washington down by one. So it was time for the moment of truth. Washington coach Guy Montecalvo could kick the tie an extra point or he could roll the dice and go for two and the win. All or nothing for Washington. Quarterback Ken Carr stuffed by a host of Burrow Buccaneers who upset top-rated Washington. Unbelievable. It's a dream of mine for I don't know how long I've... Who threw the flag for an illegal use of the airwaves here on Prime? Hey, what's your name real quick? Terry Decoy. Jim Hoffman. Bob Ralston. Mike Collingwood. Well, you know, these guys take a lot of heat throughout the season, so we thought on the report we'd give them a little credit as we get set to get out of here. Without these guys, forget about the game because they are the ones that are in between the lines each and every Friday night. And don't forget, we're back with more as we now move on to PIAA action, and we'll have semifinal results next week. And now for the hardest working crew on the field at Rhino and Prime, I'm Rob Pratt. We'll see you next week on KBL Prime. Okay, I'm at BP talking to cars about Super 93. I guess it's like an Upper St. Clair home game. This is what, seven out of eight years, all five for us right here, but the best team in the state against them here tonight. Unfortunately for St. Clair, Sean, they've run into some pretty good teams the last couple of years they've been here. They've lost the last two years, and again, they're facing a, a dynamite team in Penn Hills. Probably Penn Hills is favored in this game, so again, they're going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah, they're favored. When you look at that offensive line, I think that would make anybody want to favor this team. The, the size is just incredible in the matchup. Upper St. Clair has the one big fellow in Jason Besson at 6'8", 280, but Penn Hill's a lot bigger than that. They are, Sean. They average about 260, 270 across the offensive line, and that's probably going to be the key to this game, how Upper St. Clair's defensive line can handle Penn Hill's offensive line. Upper St. Clair has a little bit better versatility than they can throw the ball as well as run the ball with Kellen Hawkins, whereas Penn Hill's bread and butter comes with D. Wayne Thompson and Victor Strader. Thompson has rushed for 1,300 yards, and Strader has rushed for 1,200 yards this year, so they, that's a pretty nice one-two duo they have. Of course, the most notable guys on that Penn, Penn Hills line are DeMond Gibson, the uh, left guard, and also the uh, defensive uh, nose tackle who is over 300, what is he, 318 pounds. Exactly. He's headed to Pitt on a scholarship. Then there's Mike White, who they say is 6'4", uh, 295, but you can imagine this time of year on uh, Thanksgiving the other day, he's, he's got to be way over that. Exactly. He's probably added a few pounds since then, but regardless, they're big. St. Clair's going to have to rely on quickness to get around some of this this beef on the Penn Hills offensive line, and we'll just have to see how they handle it. The stars in this game, of course, you mentioned Strader and Thompson for Penn Hills, both over 1,200. In fact, Thompson's over 1,300 yards this season. Colin Hawkins for Upper St. Clair. An unbelievable career he has had. He's got over, uh, what do we figure for a career, over 2,500 yards in two years. Yeah, he's just a remarkable athlete, Sean. He's rushed for 1,600 yards. 
The other thing about Hawkins, again, is his versatility. He's also the field goal kicker. He's had 20 touchdowns, 38 extra points, six field goals. He almost totals up 50% up for St. Clair's point output this year. Well, they've got the stars. Of course, the other guy, the star, what might be, uh, in fact, the, the most important part of Upper St. Clair, Mac McCardle, just a sophomore, but in his second WPIL final at quarterback, and he was really the lone star if anybody stood out for the Panthers last year in their final loss, in which they almost beat a good, great McKee sport team, state championship team. He was the man, and uh, he could be the man here tonight. He certainly could, Sean. Again, I think they're going to have to balance the passing with the running game tonight, and they're going to have to put some points on the boards because I doubt that they can shut Penn Hills down for the entire game. So they're going to have to score three or four touchdowns to win this game. So uh, we've got a good one coming up here for you from Three Rivers Stadium. We'll be back with quite a championship play right after this. General, Duquesne University Sports Medicine Institute. By Gillette, the best a man can get. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, the PG, makes the day for me. Cameron Coca-Cola, always in the game, always Coca-Cola. And by Adelphia Cable Communications. Well, the quad A final of Penn Hills Indians set to come onto the field as the Penn Hills band leaves the field here, Dan. And we've been looking at this team warm up, and as you said, mentioned, it looks like a college team. What do we count? 71 players. And uh, take a look at how these teams got here to the final. The Indians 12 and 0 with wins over Norwin and Penn Trafford in the playoffs. Got against that uh, real passing team that should get them prime for Colin Hawkins here this evening. Exactly. They. They gave up some passing yards, but the important thing is the score, and it really didn't bother him. It was an easy win for him. And obviously no trouble at all with Norwin in the first round. Look at the Upper St. Clair Road to the uh, final here for the seventh time in the last eight seasons. A big win over North Hills at home in the first week. A lot of people had them underdogs in that game. They shut down LeVar Arrington just 44 yards in that game for him. And then the big win, Seneca Valley at North Allegheny last uh, Saturday afternoon, and McCardle had a big football game in that day with uh, Jason Daly catching a couple touchdown passes. Yeah, it's a good Seneca Valley team that they beat. It, it, you know, as the Whitfield Quad A season went on, North Allegheny was favored early on. They were ranked in the USA Today. Then Seneca Valley came through, beat NA, and then Penn Hills has kind of taken over the limelight since then. Now they're ranked in the USA Today 12-0. and You take a look there, if you look at the way things have gone for Upper St. Clair over the last eight seasons and, and uh, back in 88 the first year they won the Whitfield they were not involved in the PIAA playoffs in Central went on to win the state quad a title that was the first year it was ever contested and then of course they went on to beat North Hills in the final in 89 and go undefeated Doug Whaley Pete Abeeb and win that uh, state championship they didn't make it in 1990 I don't know what happened that year but uh, <laughs> Coach Render I'm sure is having got an investigation into it they lost to Connellsville in 91. That was our first year seeing the Panthers here at Three Rivers, and that was quite a contest. But then came back, beat North Allegheny the year after that, and as Dan mentioned, the last two weeks or two seasons, losing to the state champions. Exactly. Actually, the last three seasons, McKeesport won the state champ, North Hills won the state champion, and even the year Upper St. Clair won the Whitfield, they lost to Cumberland Valley, who went on and won the state championship. You see the captains meeting at midfield. Colin Hawkins, number 21 for Upper St. Clair. David Kern, number 7, the linebacker and tight end for the Panthers. And there you get a look at the, the size difference there with the uh, Penn Hills players. We're going to have the coin toss, and let's go to the officials on the field if we can, see if we can pick up that mic. Panthers won the toss and did not, uh, they're going to defer to the second half. The uh, Jeremy George, one of the number 33, one of the captains for Penn Hills, along with number 75, Mike White, number 65, DeMond Gibson. Boy, and you get an idea how big White and Gibson are right there. At the, at the, look at, right. at White coming off the field. Right, number 28, Garrett Livingston, the inside linebacker and also the fullback 
for this Penn Hills team, and Danny's a pretty good runner himself. Yeah, there was a nice article in the Greensburg Trib this morning by Rich Emmert about Livingston and kind of an unsung hero's role, you know, playing fullback and also playing the other inside linebacker position. He's been a real key to this team this year. So it'll be Penn Hills getting the football first. And the Panthers kicking it off here right to left. And that means Colin Hawkins will be the first man to touch the football in play. And that's been the case all season long for the Upper St. Clair Panthers. What a season he has had. 171 points scored easily, the leading scorer in Western Pennsylvania. 20 touchdowns on the ground. He's had a good year kicking the football with 33 extra points, six field goals. What a season it has been for Colin Hawkins and kind of fitting that he gets to kick off this championship game. It is. This will be his third year in the Whippeal Finals. Uh, hasn't come out with a win yet, so you know he's looking to end his career with a victory. Dwayne Thompson is the deep man for Penn Hills. He wears number 22, and he's one of the two super juniors on the Penn Hills offense. He stands inside his own 10-yard line. He's the man in the middle. Also back there with him, Damian Germany, a flanker. And number 21, Victor Strader. Strader on the near side. Hawkins kicks the football. We're underway. It's going to come to Germany on the hop. No, it's taken by number 23, Nick Brown. And Brown is uh, hemmed in quickly by the Panthers' coverage. And brought down inside his own 30-yard line. So Upper St. Clair obviously excited with some pretty good play on the opening play of the game, Dan. I'm sure Penn Hills has been used to that this year, kicking away from Thompson and Strader. Kind of a little bit of a squib, but good coverage by Upper St. Clair. They keep them inside the 30. They'll start at the 28. Got a look at Len Gilmer, the uh, quarterback, the junior for Penn Hills. He wears number three. Not a lot of passes, just 45 total for the season, 368 yards. They're a running football team. And Thompson, the left halfback, Number 22 is in there on the first play. He gets the pitch. He's got it right. past the 30, the 40. He's and right. he is on his way oh, to drop nice down from behind. Bob Bond, the linebacker from Upper St. Clair, the junior, makes the touchdown saving tackle for Penn Hills in early business in Upper St. Clair territory. So the Indians start quickly. You see there at the end of the play in Bond. Just reaching out and Great pulling effort. him down by the back of the neck there. Just a student body right, and Thompson did a nice job getting around the corner, but credit really goes to the blockers. Look at the lane right there. Yeah. They really do a good job giving him a running lane, and he does the rest. A downfield block by DeMond Gibson. It's again, uh, this is Strader. He gets his first carry from the tailback spot, and he picks up five on first down. I think there's a penalty movement on Penn Hill, Sean. That should bring it back. There is a flag in the backfield. And Dan is correct. They'll move that one back so the Panthers can uh, at least take a deep breath here defensively and dig in a little bit. Let's take a look at the rest of that uh, Penn Hills starting offense if we can as soon as we uh, get the signal. Yep, it's illegal motion against the Indians of Penn Hills. Strader and Thompson are the, the halfbacks for Penn Hills. Strader's still in there, number 21. Number 28 is the fullback. That's Garrett Livingston. The pitch to Strader. He'll try the right side. He has room, but he's hemmed in nicely on the near side as uh, number 99, Alex Olshansky, came down the line. Pete Phillips came up to make the first hit for Upper Sinclair, number 11. If they're going to continue to run these sweeps, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the St. Clair linebackers and cornerbacks, defensive backfield to come up and make that play. Get a look there at the uh, offensive front. Uh, and as we mentioned, Gibson and White, the big guys for Penn Hills. Dina Talley, the tight end. Second and just about 10 yards. It's Thompson on the carry. He takes the pitch. And the Panthers reacted quickly. He picked up about three or four yards on the play, but was unable to break the long one as he did in the first play offensively. Aaron Coe, number 66, out there, and along with Doug Blinn, number 85 for Upper St. Clair, and, of course, David Kern, number seven, the ever-present uh, linebacker and defensive captain for Upper St. Clair. St. Clair has seen a similar type team that they saw last year in the championship game against McKeesport. Not only is Penn Hills big, but they also have great speed, as they've shown already in the backfield. 
nose tackle for Upper St. Clair is number 77, Justin Bear. And uh, he pushes the line back. And Strader's looking for him. He's in trouble. He's lost four or five. And yep, Upper St. Clair's going to take him down for a loss. It's Jason Besson, the man to finish him off. Big number 75, along with Bob Bunn. It's going to set up fourth and ten, and the Indians going to have to punt the football after what appeared to be a promising start offensively. Well, you see the lead fullback. He just got pushed right back, and that clogged everything up. Let's see if I can get a number on that. And by the time he had to reverse his field, St. Clair did a good job on the weak side pursuit. Dave Zakia on to punt the football for Penn Hills. With Tim Stein calling for the fair catch, but they're going to let it roll, and it's going to be a Penn Hills roll. Down to about the six-yard line, where it's close to the five, inside the five, and they're right at the five. The Indians will down it, and for St. Clair will start out deep in their own territory. So we'll take a commercial here, and we'll be back with Upper St. Clair's first trip on offense right after this. No score in your Quad A championship. I could never... Right at about the 14-yard line. He's going to be a yard short of a first down. Set up third and one. Penn Hills is starting with four down linemen, Sean, but the linebackers are really playing tight. It's almost a six or seven man front. If McArdle can get any time at all, it's really just one-on-one -on -one coverage in the secondary. That's a lot of pressure to put on your secondary, especially when you're playing against a pretty good quarterback who's going to hit somebody if they're open. And you saw it right there on the replay. Stein's right foot uh, coming down on the line right after his left foot came down for the completion. As we said, McArdle's the quarterback. And here comes the pitch to Hawkins. He's going to try the left side, but whistles blow, flags fly. It will be no play. Bob Bunn, number 33, is the Panthers' fullback. Eric Render, the tight end, number 19, the coach's son, that's Justin gonna, Jr. That's going to be on Penn Hills, and that's going to give him a first down. And now uh, it gives me an opportunity to ask, you know, it's uh, I should know better than to uh, second-guess the coaches won 217 games, but <laughs> Coach Render's used to it uh, by now. They deferred, and we, you know, we talked about it before the game. If St. Clair to be in a game like this has got to score first, maybe get ahead, and you know, make it almost a shootout against a power team like Penn Hill. I think it was psychological more than anything. You know, we're not intimidated by you. We're not, you know, we're not scared of you. We'll come out and play defense against you. I really think that was psychological because we've seen him coach over the years. That's not something he typically does. So far, it works. And Hawkins on the carry, across the left side, across the 20 to about the 22-yard line before he's brought down on the play by Garrett Livingston for Penn Hills. Also helped out on the play by Jeremy George, number 33, the senior defensive end. And look at Gibson there being blocked by Aaron Coe. And yeah, he's, he, he's telling me he's grabbing me by the jersey, which he was, but if you keep your hands in tight, you can usually get away with that. Second and six from the Panthers from their own 24-yard line. You see Eric Render, the tight end, switch sides. Phillips comes to the near side as a flanker. Hawk, or McCardle wants to throw the football, and he has Jason Daly to split end, and it's first on yardage, but it's going to be no catch. Incomplete, uh, the coverage on the play by Dwayne Thompson, number 22. For the Indians, and Panthers thrown early in the uh, down and distance here, Dan. Something not at all unexpected with the way Mac McCardle's been throwing the football in recent weeks. Now, as, as I said, if you take a look at the way Penn Hills is lining up on defense, they're really bringing everybody. They're almost forcing them or daring them to throw the ball. By the way, uh, I want to mention Corey Connors, number 69 in there instead of number 76 at the defensive tackle spot for Penn Hills. Connors uh, playing on the right side, the near side of the field. McCardle fakes it to Hawkins, goes down the middle of the field, has a wide open beat Phillips. Well, not really wide open, the ball a little bit too far as uh, Phillips was being covered on the play by Damian Germany, but he had a step on him, Dan. But it's actually a perfect call, Sean, because there's no free safety for Penn Hills. You'll see him come over late, but he was double teaming the wide receiver on the far side. He gets over there to help out, but the middle of the field is wide open. That's an excellent call. They just weren't able to make the completion. Yeah, Mac just got a little bit too much air under that football. And uh, Panthers have to punt it away. That's Mike Junko. And the ball's going to bounce. Uh, Pete Phillips going to down it right about the 48-yard line. Up Penn Hill, so the Indians get good field position here. 
to start things off for the second time. WPIAL Championship Football being brought to you by the International Culinary Academy, where you earn a specialized associate's degree in as little as 18 months. First and 10, Penn Hills Indians on their own 49-yard line. We'll call it just outside or inside the 49. Full house backfield to give the straighter on the counter, and he's being chased out from behind by Alex Olshansky. Kern had a shot at him, but Strader just breaks a couple tackles and ends up with an eight or nine yard carry, Dan. Yeah, that's just pure talent. He got that all on his own. Actually, the defensive lineman for St. Clair did a great job stopping that play in the beginning, but Strader just bounced it outside and picked up some good yardage. We do have an upper St. Clair player injured on the field. And frankly, I didn't see him go down, and I, it's tough to tell from here just what the number is. Uh, Mike Campbell, number 37, the outside linebacker, could very well be. We'll take a look and see if we can see what happened to him. Yep, Campbell's up, and they're going to hustle him off to the far sideline. Let's see if we can pick up where Mike comes in. Oh, he got a block there, and he got drilled twice. Looked like he got hit by a truck there, Dan. Yeah, he got hit by Mr. Gibson. Gibson. <laughs> the impressive thing was with Gibson is that after he made that block, he went and made another block. You know, that, he yeah. just didn't take over, take it easy. He made that block, and then he went and looked for somebody else. We talked about the size problem that Upper St. Clair is going to have, and you saw it illustrated just there. Number 78, Richard Phillips in on the defensive line. He brings a little bit of size to the Panthers' defense as the give is to Thompson, and Thompson picks up a first down just outside the Upper St. Clair 40-yard line. So on third and short, uh, Coach Render or second and short, so went to the beefier front line, but they couldn't uh, keep Penn Hills from picking up the first down. As you see, Greg Corzin head to the uh, Panthers' sideline. Constant shuffling on that upper St. Clair defense, and you'll see a lot of that all night long as you get a look at uh, Thompson, just 5'9", 170, but runs a lot bigger. This is straighter from his halfback spot nice in the power eye set. He's got about eight more for David Kern and Pete Phillips able to bring him down. They're mixing in their play selection up well. Coach Gordon is, you know, they're going outside, they're going inside, they're running left wide, they're running right wide. Here's an excellent cut. Yeah. Gets, breaks one tackle, and then the other cut gives them about five more yards. See Thompson and Gibson leading him, and then Mike White coming out there as well. Second and short, second and about two. This is Thompson. Great inside move, and he cut and almost broke that one for the score. Pete Phillips able to bring him down though on that play. Also with some help from uh, big number 76, so 78 Richard Phillips. Sean, you'll notice Penn Hills is trying to speed up their offense. They feel they have them backpedaling, yeah. and they're just getting a play in in a hurry and coming right back at them. A power eye set there, and there it goes. It's Thompson with a little counter play, and he's picking up five more. Panthers defense having a lot of trouble digging in here against that big, powerful Penn Hills front. Yeah, I can, I'm watching the Penn Hill sideline. Coach Gordon is just circling his arm saying, let's go, keep moving. You know, speed things up. We got them backpedaling. Let's keep coming at them. If St. Clair isn't able to stop Penn Hills running between the tackles, they're going to have a long night. Second and four. First and ten. First and goal. Inside the ten. Dwayne Thompson on the carry. And they're rolling them up. Yeah, well, now's when you go back outside. You've run inside the last two or three times. You've gotten good yardage. Maybe you fake to your fullback and kick it to the outside. Now mark it just outside the eight yard line. Looks like the fullback may have jumped a little quick, but they're really moving in a hurry, aren't they? And you see Bunn pull the ball loose there, but I would believe that uh, it'll be ruled down. Dwayne Thompson on the carry, not a fumble. It's a gain instead to the six yard line where it'll be second and goal for Penn Hills and Thompson and Strader both coming out now that's Thompson and uh, number 28 Garrett Livingston both coming out this is Strader and he takes it down to the one for Jason Basson and Pete Phillips able to bring him down hearing a lot of Pete Phillips' name already and as a quarterback that's not a good sign that's not what you want to hear and if you were wondering why Penn Hills quarterback Len Gilmer's only thrown the ball 45 times this year now you see why when you can run the ball like this there's really no need 
Thompson, seven carries for 57 yards already in the game. And Strader has 19 yards on five carries. So they're piling up the yardage, and it's only the first quarter. Third and goal from the two. It's Strader. He tries to dive over the top. Yeah. The Panthers pushed him back, I think. That's the hook, the signal is. It is a touchdown. So Penn Hill's on the board first here. With 3.53 to play in the first quarter. This is a team that scores a lot of points. 28 points per game they average. And they're right on schedule. Watch him get up in the air. He sees there's a lot of traffic there. He decides right about here he's going to go over top and he gets a good spin. Dave Zakia on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up. It's good. And it's a 7 0 Penn Hills lead. We get another shot of the touchdown. Just, just had it all and just reached the ball over the goal line right there. There's the touchdown. And with Penn Hills leading Upper St. Clair, we'll be back with more first quarter quad eight championship action right after this. PIAL Championship Football is being brought to you by Computer Tech. Prepare for your career in the computer industry at Computer Tech, where you earn a specialized associate degree in just 18 months. Well, Dave Zakia will kick it off here, and the Panthers will get to run one back for the first time here tonight. Then they had an opportunity to do it. We questioned it, but it seemed to work out the, the way the Panthers had wanted early on. They got the ball, just couldn't move it downfield, and Penn Hills, just an awesome offensive display as Zakia's kick goes out of bounds. That'll give Upper St. Clair the ball on, where, on the 35? No, they penalize him. That's a penalty. That's correct. I believe in high school it's to the 40. I might be wrong. Maybe it's the 35. Let's see here. We'll see what the official says. Sean, the big key with, you know, deferring on the kickoff for Upper St. Clair was that the defense wasn't able to keep Penn Hills down in their own end of the field. A lot of times you do that for field possession. As you recall Penn Hills' first possession, they broke off that long run, and all of a sudden the field possession is different. Penn Hills had the punt. St. Clair has the ball in their own end. Right. They get off a short kick. That second possession for Penn Hills, they started at the 50. They were playing on a short field. Well, that uh, bad kick by Zakia gives the Panthers first and 10 at their own 35 and good field position for Mac McCardle. You see Render switching sides and Along with Tim Stein, the flanker on the far side. Jason Daly split to the near side, but it's Hawkins, the tailback, and he just got about a yard over the left side for Upper St. Clair. Number 89, the man of the hour, Ron Graham, just a junior, inside linebacker for Penn Hills, made the play, and he is really something. Well, again, Penn Hills is really selling out on the run. I, they, I think St. Clair needs to go back down the middle of the field, maybe using their tight end or trying to slide Helen, Cullen Hawkins out in the flat or down the middle of the field because they're really coming. There's nobody in the middle of the field in the secondary. Split backs, Upper St. Clair. You, see the, uh, you saw the graphic, 40 yards last week for Hawkins against Seneca Valley. Well, Mac McCardle took that game over with his arm, and here he is maybe to throw it. No, he's going to tuck it and run, and he picks up about fumble. eight yards, loses it on the fumble. We've got a loose ball in the middle of the field. And it looks like Penn Hills is in the best position to recover, but we'll have to see after they unfile that mess. It yeah, they do Penn have Hills it. Football. There is a flag down, but I think it's a holding because it's in the backfield upper St. Clair. We'll have to take a look at it. On the rollout by McArdle, they threw the flag. I'd have to guess that's a holding penalty. So the play will stand. One would think. And it is. Yep. First down. So the Indians get a break here with... 2.57 to play in the first quarter, leading 7-0. You see, here's McCardle, and it looked like a pretty good decision. He got outside. He had to, was being pressured from the back. And it was a real good decision. He just didn't hold on to the ball. There it is, the backside hit. You see it happen so often. You're not expecting that. And I believe that was 89, Ron Graham, who knocked it loose. But it was a good run by McCardle. He almost picked up the first down, but unfortunately, great pursuit by Penn Hills, and they stripped the ball, and they're back in business. Pick up of about seven yards on first down. It's second and three for the Indians. Just outside the upper St. Clair, 41-yard line. See Graham go in motion, throw that block off tackle, and they just run Thompson right up in there behind him, and he's close to a first down. Two. 
quite a game for him last week. Uh, Dwayne Thompson, four touchdowns in that game. Now he's on a pace for 175 yards in this game. Yep. He had 175 in that one. And there's a run up the middle by uh, Thompson again. He's got the first down and down near the 30-yard line. As they're just moving it through this upper St. Clair defense. And the question, you know, this if they're doing it this early, this, this easy, this early. And the concern for Upper St. Clair, as I mentioned earlier, Sean, is they're doing it between the tackles. And with their speed, if they're able to go inside, sooner or later they're going to, you know, go student body right again or kick it to the outside. They have to be able to shut them down between the tackles and dictate the kind of plays they run. Thompson will try the left side, and Panthers stacked him up. Uh, Doug Blinn in there to help make the play. Not the first man there. The first man, I believe, is Cullen Hawkins. You'll see 21 come from the bottom of that pile. Aaron Coe kind of held his ground from the tackle spot but Hawkins comes from his linebacker spot in his corner spot on the right side and got the first there hit he is. on Strader sets up second and a long eight for Penn Hills Strader gained him about four on that one and there's about three St. Clair defenders laying on the ground. They all had shots at him. One had a shot at him in the backfield. He was able to slip that tackle and kick it outside. Well, Neil Gordon has said that he thinks both of these backs are probably Division I backs. And, well, that's something. Can you imagine that? And they're in the same class. It's not like one's a junior or a senior. Exactly. I love both these guys again next year. And they sure look like it, don't they? They sure do. So far, anyhow, he carries 32 yards for Victor Strader. Strader and Thompson both in there. Strader on the halfback on the near side and there's Thompson on the carry close to first down yardage but stacked up David Kern made a good hit on him there I think he's going to be about a yard short along with Alex Olshansky for the Panther defense and they did hold him short it's going to be fourth and one here for the Indians Upper St. Clair held him once on fourth down. So already our first big play, the last play of the first quarter. St. Clair needs to change the momentum around. This is where they do it. Clock under 30 seconds here, as you see in the top left of your screen. They give us to the tailback, and he's got the first down straighter easily. He's down to about the 15-yard line to set up a shop. And may or may not be, uh, see that as they move the sticks, we're down to 14 seconds. Get a look there at the... Uh, Head coach Jim Render, and obviously not pleased with the development so far, but as we mentioned early on, just getting this team back here again. And uh, it's one of the big problems that we talked about. Look at those, the record in eight years at Upper St. Clair 91 12 and 1. But uh, that is the end of the first quarter of play here at Three River Stadium. Sean Doherty, Dan Donahoe, bringing you the WPIL Quad A Championship here on Prime Sports. It's 7-0, Penn Hills. There you see it. It's seven nothing here after one quarter of play, and we'll take a look at first quarter stats. And as the uh, Penn Hills Indians get set to go here on first and ten at the Upper St. Clair 15-yard line, 110 yards rushing. We'll look at the stats right after this play, but already, and that's why they lead it seven nothing. Look at the run there by Strader as he's down to almost another first down pickup before Chris Todaro is able to help bring him down for Upper St. Clair along with Alex Olshansky and Doug Glynn. And Dan, there's the numbers, and they're not pretty if you're an Upper St. Clair Panther fan. No, they're not. 110 yards rushing in the first quarter. Thompson was 70 yards straighter with 40. He just picked up another 9 or 10 yards. So he's got 50 yards. They now have 120 rushing yards. Uh, and you, you're almost getting to the point where St. Clair has to start gambling. There you see it. There it is. David Kern on the blitz, but he doesn't get to the right guy. And it looks like another first down pickup for Penn Hills. It is a first down pickup for Dwayne Thompson. Easily, he's going to set it up here first and goal for looked, the Indians. This looked like offsides, but they didn't call it. But a, a nice block. And they're just pushing him back. By Garrett Livingston, he picked up the blitz and kicked him out, and that opened up the hole for the first down. 
Coach Gordon will grade you with an A so far. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that doesn't uh, doesn't get picked up all that often. But you mentioned Livingston, the senior fullback who saw Kern coming and just shielded him away. There's Tadaro got wrapped around the running back on that play, but still a pickup of a yard. He's down almost into the goal line here on second. It is a touchdown. Must have been laying across it. They couldn't tell until they dug him out a little bit Wayne and saw Thompson. that he was laying in the end zone. So Strader and Thompson each have one here. With just 10.51 to play in the first half. It's Penn Hills out to a 13-0 lead. It's my first chance to see Penn Hills this year, Sean. I think the thing that impresses me most about Thompson and Strader is they're just not fast, they're just not quick. They break tackles. I mean, he broke two tackles just gaining that three yards. They're running through people. And Strader holds for Dave Zakia, so they're versatile as well. <laughs> On to attempt the extra point, Zakia's kick is up. It's perfect. It's a 14-0 Penn Hills lead in the Quad A Championship. We'll take another look at the touchdown and see if we get a clearer look uh, from another angle as to how he got in there. Thompson with the short touchdown run. Coming right at it, yeah. And there's two guys who hit him, and he carries them yep, in. Yeah. There's the third. I mean, that's there's, just a nice piece of running. You see them just pushing the guys in the middle mm -hmm. back. So it's a touchdown for Dwayne Thompson and a 14-0 Penn Hills lead here early in second quarter action. Early on in this game, Penn Hills was running outside. They were pulling linemen. The last two possessions, they just played straight ahead football. They're just going right at them. Man on man, blocking straight ahead. Nothing fancy. They're just coming at them. It's the best spot to find out what's going on in the world of sports. The press box on top of all the action. Highlights, scores, interviews, and the inside scoop on the deals of the day. Tune into the box. Imagine a world where the... The Price Fighter, Route 51, Bell Vernon. The key is kick is up, and Hawkins is going to field it at his own seven-yard line for Upper St. Clair. Across the 20 to about the 23 on the pickup. So a decent return, but not great field position. But at least Mac McCardle can be fairly comfortable getting under center here, Dan. And it's time Upper St. Clair is going to have to produce something here offensively before this game gets away from them. Well, it is, and it's time that they, you know, they haven't had the ball that many plays, but they have to get Cullen Hawkins in the game. He's your stud. He's the guy who got you here. You have to get him the ball. If he's having trouble running the ball, you might have to dump it off to him, but you have to get him involved in the game. You see that big second quarter play for the Penn Hills Indians so far this season. 112-17. The Panthers would like to make that 24 as the give is uh, to Hawkins, and he's got a yard or two up the middle on a little bit of a delay, but not a lot on first down. Make it a three-yard pickup, make it second and seven for the Panthers at their own 27. We, I have had the opportunity of seeing Hawkins play before. He is much... He is an excellent runner if he gets past the line of scrimmage. If you get a hit on him around the line of scrimmage, you can slow him down. But once he gets into the open field, he's a dangerous runner. So Penn Hills has to hit him early. McCardle has Stein split to the near side and Jason Daly to the top of the screen, and he wants to throw the football. He goes over the middle to Eric Render, but the ball falls incomplete as Render was covered nicely on the play by the upper St. Clair line bar by the... Uh, Penn Hills linebacker Jeremy George, number 33, who's actually listed as a defensive end. McCarter rolls right and throws back across the grain. Would have been a tough catch. Oh, he almost had it on the roll. That's yeah. what he was all disappointed about. George put a shoulder into him, too, in the middle of that. But uh, would have been very close to first time yardage. Instead, it's third and seven now for Mac McCardle. They need to pick this first down up. Jason Daly split to the far side. Pete Phillips on the flanker on the near side. That's two men in motion. Now Render will just switch spots, and they'll both stop. And here we go. Split backs. McCardle rolling to his right. Can throw on the run. Has Pete Phillips picked the ball thrown too far inside. The ball is almost picked off by number 40 for uh, Penn Hills, and that's Don Shakia. Carter only one for five. He hit on his first one, but he hasn't connected since. And that sets up a punting situation. For the Panthers, once again, Jay Junko on to punt the football. Well, Penn Hills had good pressure on him, flushed him out of the pocket. He threw that a little bit sooner. There you can see the receiver. He threw that sooner than he wanted to, but he really had no choice, and he was not open. 
looked like they were on the wrong page. Maybe Pete Phillips was trying to stay away from the defenders and Ricardo maybe expecting him to be a little bit more inside as Thompson takes the punt and goes out across the 45 yard line to about the 48 yard line. We're gonna take a break here with Penn Hills leading Upper St. Clair 14-0 in the WPIL Quad A Championship on Prime Sports. It was a glorious decade. Brooklyn wins and the Dodgers go wild. A glamorous decade. And in the center of it all, the Oklahoma kid, Mickey Mantle. Now, in Ken Burns' highly acclaimed home video, the capital of baseball, look back at the greatest decade in baseball history. Call the phone number on your screen now to relive the memorable moments of the legendary Mickey Mantle and your favorite greats, Casey Stengel, Yogi Berra, Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays, Ted Williams, and many more. Only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call now and ask how you can receive this handsome illustrated book valued at $60 absolutely free. There's never been a hero like Mickey Mantle. And there's never been a video like this before. Those Indians band celebrating. They lead it 14-0. The quad A final over the Upper St. Clair Panthers and Panther defense, Dan, I don't know if we had some adjustments there, but Victor Strader stacked up on first down. Penn Hills has been averaging about six yards per play. That's key, stopping them on first down. Chris Todaro in the middle of that one, number 34, the linebacker along with Aaron Coe, Doug Blinn helping out as well. Todaro goes out of the lineup as Upper St. Clair switches things around a little bit. We've got Matt Ellis, number 42 in there, maybe a bit of more of a cover man, but heck, Van Hills doesn't throw, so that's not the idea. <laughs> Ellis at the linebacker spot on the near side. He's actually playing, I guess, on the corner. And he'll pitch it to Strader, and he'll try the right side this time, and picks a little bit more success. He picks up about five yards on the play. As Doug Blitt brings him down, along with Jason Besson for Upper St. Clair. Earlier in the Class A championship, it was Farrell beating Manesson 30 to 14, making our producer Joe Magnu and his friends very happy. Of course, uh, Farrell beating Wash High in the uh, AA final in overtime. What a great game that was. And then, of course, Bell Vernon winning their first WPIAL championship over Franklin Regional in the AAA championship. And to give us the Thompson on the pitch and Upper St. Clair defended that nicely. He's going to set up a punting situation here for Penn Hills. There's uh, number 45 for the Panthers. Up to make the play, Andy Tackett from his linebacker spot. He did. Make you can hit. see him. He slips through here. And he's the one who slows him down and he gets some help from number, who was that? I didn't Matt see Ellis, that. I from Matt Ellis. From Matt Ellis. So that was a great defensive stop, much needed for Upper St. Clair. There's a lot of time left in this game. Sure. This game is by no means over. The Penn Hills has dominated it early. Stein and Hawkins deep to ret return Dave Zakia's punt. Zakia standing at his own 39. He'll punt it from about the 42. And it's off the side of his foot. Pete Phillips almost got hit by it, and then he falls on it. Now up to St. Clair will take over. Throw him 24. <laughs> A little scary uh, play there for Pete Phillips. I didn't see that ball coming down. You pretty much see this throughout today. These teams aren't really used to playing on AstroTurf, and, and it's a lot different fielding a punt on AstroTurf. One, you shouldn't let the ball bounce if you can avoid it. And two, you always got to be careful because you never do know where it's going to bounce. Well, the other thing that might come out just uh, real quickly here, Zakia punting the football. And it was, a, it was an ugly putt off the side of his foot. My guess is he hasn't had much chance to putt the football this season. <laughs> exactly. Jason Daly split the near side. Tim Stein to the far side. Render switches the tight end spot for Upper St. Clair McArdle. First and 10. Panthers are on 25. Option. Loose ball. McArdle gets it. Hawkins couldn't find it. And McArdle did get it back. Number 85 for Penn Hills was there. B.J. Di Natale from his uh, defensive end spot, almost uh, had the recovery. They actually had this set up pretty nice. There's the inside fake to the fullback. He, uh, you can see if Hawkins had the ball, he had some room around the end. McArdle did a good job getting back on the ball. 
But it's going to put him in a hole at second and 15. Yeah, loss of five on the play for McCardo. He'll send Jason Daly to the far side of the field. Daly, a guy who almost didn't play football at Upper St. Clair this season, their leading receiver, has had a great year. The fake draw, and McCardo Let's... is in big trouble. Just uh, really, uh, they're going to call that an incomplete call. And that's so. a correct call. His arm was going forward. That's what I was trying to say with my tongue went down the back of my throat there. I was, Pull it back out. Yeah, let's go. We got it. That's going to set up third and 15 for the Panthers. This incredible pressure there by the Penn Hills defensive line. Here you see the blitz, number 26, I believe it is. There he goes. See, there's just a missed block by Hawkins. Yeah. He goes out into the play. The fake right instead of taking the guy out. And the yeah. came in. Number 26, Dorian Atkins. There's a draw, and Hawkins, a big run, and, but he's not, not going to get enough. quite the first down yard as he gets out across the 30-yard line. And they have not picked up a first down yet. I was just starting to wonder, uh, no, they have not. No, they just, haven't. Just going to say, Dan, you know, anybody that's seen Coach Render's teams a lot knows he's pretty big on uh, gadget plays. And would have thought, you know, maybe on third and 15, but deep in your own territory, not always a good idea. What with the draw, they didn't get it. Junko on to punt it. It'll be straighter. Uh, oh, it's Thompson at the 35. Covered nicely. By Upper St. Clair, the first man down there was number 30, Dan Emmerich, senior fullback. Thompson did a good job of fielding that ball off the first bounce because, again, if he doesn't get it, it's going to roll about 10 or 15 more yards. So Penn Hills will set up shop at their own 34-yard line here with 5.08 and ticking in the first half, leading 14-0 over the Upper St. Clair Panthers. Junior quarterback, Len Gilmer. The pitch is to, to Thompson. It's real easy to know who gets the ball. It's either Thompson or Strader. <laughs> Take your pick. You got a 50-50 shot. Occasionally, it's Garrett Livingston, the fullback. We have another injured Upper St. Clair Panther as the uh, Penn Hills trainers quickly out onto the field. And here come the Upper St. Clair trainers across to look at him. And it's the big fella, Jason Basson, I believe. No, it's not Jason because I see him standing at, uh, oh, we'll have to wait and see. Seventy-seven. Justin Bear, 6'2", 255-pound junior. Yep, that's, let's see if we can take a look here. On the left side of your screen here. There he is, right behind Hawkins. Yeah, Hawkins and Kern and big Penn Hills player, they all kind of converge. His right foot kind of rolled underneath him there. This doesn't look good for Justin Bear, at least for the rest of this football game. I, you know, as quickly as those Penn Hills trainers came off the bench, he knew it was something fairly obvious. And unfortunately, you can see there, Justin's in a little bit of pain. More than a little bit, I would guess. Yeah, I think you're right. He's had a fine season for Upper St. Clair. It was left guard spot. That's going to, you know, we talk about the having trouble keeping out that up Penn Hills pressure. Now they lose left guard, starting left guard, and a big fella. It's a left uh, ankle or left foot there, as you see, and being carried off. That's a tough loss for the Panthers. Probably will mean that uh, somebody else will just have to go two ways. My guess we'll check that out when the Panthers get it back offensively. Aaron Coe, Alex Olshansky, and Jason Besson, the uh, front end on the defensive line in there now. I think it was Coe who replaced Bear in the lineup right now. The give is to uh, Penn Hills' Dwayne Thompson. He picks up a couple yards on the play. It's going to set up, though, a third down, and about two and a half, three yards to go. Again, pretty good penetration by St. Clair's line, but Thompson's able to slide through there for three more yards for a third and third and about three.
approaching four minutes to play here in the first half. Damian Germany split to the near side, but they give us to the tailback Thompson, and he stopped what appears to be short of first down yardage. I think he's short, and that's going to put Coach Gordon in a tough spot. David Kern and Aaron Coe on the tackle for Upper St. Clair, and it he's, is. He's not going to hesitate. He's going to punt. Now with a 14-0 lead, he's fairly comfortable. He's not going to play around a little bit here. It's a pretty smart move, one would guess. Uh, of course, with Dave Zakia, I don't know. Any uh, gadget punting plays? No, I don't Jordan? think so. I think, it, you know, if not he wanted to go gamble. for it, he'd just line up and go for yeah. it the way they've been playing. But that's two good defensive stops for Upper St. Clair the last two series. They just need to get some first downs on offense. Zakia gets his foot into that one pretty good, and Tim Stein calls for the fair catch. Well, Hawkins fields it at the 25. I don't know if he can do that. Well, <laughs> one guy called for it, and the other guy run with it. Nice. So I think they're going to set it right at the 24, <laughs> inside the 24. And there, Upper St. Clair will have three minutes and 12 seconds to see if they can get some offense going here. Just get a look there at uh, Tim Timko, the defensive coordinator for the Penn Hills Indians. I think he's arguing that that's an illegal fair catch. Yeah. Uh, Tim, Tim Stein signaled for the fair catch, but he didn't catch the ball. But they're just going to line it up and start from their own 24-yard line. They have to get some first downs here. I think they've only ran eight plays so far. Well, they'll send Daly to the far side with Stein in the slot. Split backs behind Mac McCardle. Comes Stein in motion, and Mac wants to throw it. Yeah, we better throw it in our and he had Hawkins out there, but he just threw it a little high. He couldn't quite to get set up. Aaron Coe was out there to block. We're going to a little one-man quick screen. It appeared uh, Upper St. Clair was trying to pull off there, but pass a little bit high for Hawkins. Well, Ron, Ron Graham just came in untouched, and yeah. McArdle had no time whatsoever. He turned around, and there he is in his face. Yeah, he's, he's there, amazing, isn't he? And it was covered well, too. You, you can see the uh, Penn Hills defender, number 23, Nick Brown. He was there. Yeah. You see Bra or, uh, Graham, three sacks on the season. It was thought he was real close to number four there. McCardle got the pass off, though. There's a draw, and that's got nothing on it. As, uh, Bob Bunn is stacked right up as he went right into a wall of Penn Hills defenders. And we've been, by big number 75. We've spent a good, Mike White. good part of the first half talking about Penn Hills running the ball, but their defense has been unbelievable. This is a team. You know, that scores 31 points per game, Upper St. Clair. They've actually scored more points in the season than Penn Hills. Their defense has played superb. Of course, Penn Hills defensive throughout the season, allowing just a fewer than 10 points per game. And they've really only been in one close game, so those defensive stats uh, probably aren't real fair to the first team. Exactly. Hard to tell. As you see Stein come in motion. Three wide receivers from McCardle. Pressure again. Got the pass off quick, nice and it looks catch. like a first down pickup. A real nice catch for Tim Stein. And it is a first down. And it's the first one for the Panthers in the first half with 2.21 to play. This is just a great catch and a good job by McCardle staying in there. There's three wide receivers. They all split, and really a great catch. Much needed for the first down. 2.19 left in the first half. Fox running. Stein with uh, 12 receptions for 223 yards on the season now. A good year for him. Pete Phillips replaces Stein, goes in motion. Bond alone back. He's got Pete Phillips open, but uh, couldn't complete the pass as Strader got over there quickly into coverage, and the pass kind of turned him around a little bit, Dan. So going to the air on first and 10 with 157. Now they'll have second and 10. Obviously passing situations here. Let's take a look at this. St. Clair offensive line did a nice job this time. McArdle had time to square. Puts the ball right there. Has to make the catch. It's yeah. a tough catch, but it's one they really needed to make. That would have given them the ball around midfield, but second and 10. Hawkins is in the slot on the far side. You see Stein go in motion. Buns the lone back. Hawkins runs a short pattern. You're going to look at uh, Jason Daly in the turn-in route. He gets it, but it's only about a four-yard gain for Upper St. Clair as Daly makes the catch. 28 receptions in the season for him. He's had a big senior year. Clock continues to run at 1.30. St. Clair has all their timeouts. 
I would assume if they pick up the first down here, you'll see them start to use their timeouts. Third down and a long six from McArdle. Bond and Hawkins behind him. Gonna fake it and try to go to Hawkins and a little uh, through the line and out. He was covered nicely on the play by Garrett Livingston in the pass incomplete. So Upper Sinclair will punt the football away here with 1-10 to play in the first half, trailing 14-0. I couldn't tell if that ball was tipped, but it was, it was a wounded duck going out there. McArdle's three for eight. There's been a couple drops, mm -hmm. but that, that ball just didn't look good. Here you see, there There's it is. The tip. Tip. Yeah, that, that explains it. Ball punted that time by David Nicholas. His first punt of the game. And with Penn Hills leading Upper St. Clair, 14-0 in the Quad A Championship. We'll be back right after these message. How's your business now that you're banking at Allegheny Valley Bank? Well, the free checking and the no-fee credit lines have been great, but now I need a computer. How about leasing that computer? From Allegheny Valley yes. Bank? Yes, great individual leasing programs with competitive low rates. From Allegheny Valley Bank. Lunch is on me again, Dad, but you leave the tip. I already did. Allegheny Valley Bank. Whether you're starting a new business or expanding a current one, consider leasing from Allegheny Valley Bank, where small business is our business. Allegheny Valley Bank. Okay, I'm out on the road talking to uh, cars about BP Super 93. How do you feel with the Super 93? I feel very, very good. Uh, yeah. It just goes through the intakes, and it just seems to make me run better throughout the day. One day I made the mistake of getting a different gas. We won't mention it. Yeah. And not only did I chug, but I went right back to BP. Well, there you have it. Nine out of ten cars, when asked, recommend BP Super 93. BP on the move. I've used 93 since birth. Uh-huh. First down Indians at their own 40-yard line. They've got uh, under 50 seconds to play here in the half. Taking a shot out. Gilbert throwing his first pass. That's Victor Strader. It's coming back. And Ellis so. in the covers. There is a flag <laughs> in the backfield of Ben Hills. And Gilmer's first pass complete all the way down to the 20-yard line. Well, don't get too excited because there's a flag down and what it's would, coming back. What would be a 39-yard pickup is going to come back, as Dan says. And, yep, that is the signal. It's a hold against the uh, Penn Hills Indians. I really like the call by Coach Gordon, though. Minute left on the clock. Why not take a shot? You know, put your speed guys on the outside and just throw it up. Gilmer threw a beautiful pass. He hit him right on the numbers. See Ron Graham down there hugging one of the offensive linemen. And that's uh, number 75, Mike White. Well, we might guess. Let's see if we can find Mike White in this replay. There's the hold. You can see it. He tackles him. Yep. I mean, that was a good call. And Ron saying, listen, don't worry about it, Mike. We're up 14. Nice catch by Just keep blocking, Strader. big fella. But this uh, makes it real tough. First and 27 for the Indians, and they're going to go back to the ground. Olshansky hit the hit, but uh, not the right man. It's Colin Hawkins what made the, what looked like a touchdown-saving tackle on Dwayne Thompson. He picked up uh, 17. Set up third and ten. And Hill's going to call timeout. 34 seconds to play in the half. Why not? Well, they, you know, they feel they dominated this first half, but they're only up 14-0. That's certainly not insurmountable. Again, St. Clair starts the second half with the ball. I think Coach Gordon would really like to tack another one on here. They just kind of slid that in there. Boom. There you see him. He was not touched until he was well into the <laughs> secondary. Now they put a big hit on Garrett Livingston instead of Thompson. And he picks up uh, the first, not the first down, but he picks up the 17 they lost on the penalty. WPIAL Championship Football is being brought to you by Vinal Windows, committed to Pittsburgh for three generations. There's the story. 14-0. Penn Hills over Upper St. Clair with just 34 seconds to play here in the first half. And Dan, the numbers I see, uh, our stat man Bob Zupanic giving them to you. They're just racking them up. Yeah, the, <laughs> their stats are tough to keep for Penn Hills. Uh, smoke coming out of Bob's ear over there. I just <laughs> Thompson with 98 yards on 18 carries. Wow. That'll set up fourth down and a couple yards to go as Doug Blinn was able to 
to stop straighter before he got to the first time as you see Justin Bear. Not a good sign. Headed to the upper St. Clair locker room on crutches. Oh, well, that was an interesting call, Sean, because it's kind of confusing as to why they called timeout. Yeah. You know, to, to just run the ball. They really have confidence in their running game, but. Well, uh, you know, you thought they would air it up and try and get another seven, but. Gilmer, what we say, only passed 45 times this season. Yeah. It would be up to 46, but it was called back. So that was a pretty good-looking ball, though. Yeah, it sure was. Right on target. Completed it. You know, we were wondering, watching him warm up, but he was throwwing the ball to the 50-yard. Yeah, he was. The goal line, throw balls as far as he could. <laughs> Didn't try any other passes. Well, that was the only thing I saw him do. Well, I think that's the only one they let him throw. <laughs> he uh, has two touchdown passes this season, as well as two interceptions. Does Gilmer 368 total yards? passing as compared to uh, McCardle who passed for over 1,300 yards. You know what this Sean quarterbacks do a lot more than throw the ball and Gilmore yeah. has ran this offense well and I'll take you back two plays ago on the ta the play to Thompson. You know just the play fake carrying out the counter fake. Absolutely. No one knew Thompson had the ball right. and you got to credit Gilmore with that. He's running those fakes just like McKeesport last year and their quarterback did a good job with play action. Gilmore wants fake. to throw it on third and three and it's in and out of the hands of Garrett Livingston. Well, now I think if you're St. Clair, they're forced to punt the ball. This, is, You Go might want to take a shot at this one and just send everybody. Question is, with the line as big as Penn Hills, can you get a shot? You might not be able to, but I mean, you yeah. might as well. There's only 23 seconds left in the half. Yeah, Gilmer had his man threw it a little bit behind him, turned him around. Livingston was looking right in the face of David Carnan, thought, eh, better off catching it. Maybe not thought better of it, but he did catch yeah. it. St. Clair has two guys back, so they, they don't really look like they're coming after it. Stein and Hawkins, but uh, they didn't get too close to it. Zakia gets it away. It'll be Stein at the 22. Looking for room, has a little bit. He's got around one man. He's going to go out of bounds about the 30-yard line and stop the clock with 13 seconds to play here in the first half. The question now is, does Coach Render put it up a few times or just take it to the locker room? I it's think, only down two touchdowns. Yeah, I think you put it up. Again, starting the second half with a ball is a big factor. You know, yeah, they're going to get the ball. They're only down two touchdowns. Don't waste any possessions. When you're down two touchdowns, Go for you might as well use them. Well, we'll see what uh, Coach Render feels. Here comes McCardle into the huddle late with the play. So one would think they're going to try something, at least one play anyhow. Junior center Rick Prosco out over the football. Daly split to the far side. Uh, you see there Render and Pete Phillips switching. The flanker Phillips on the far side now as well. Split backs. McCardle back straight. Pumps and uh, wants to go to Pete Phillips. He has him at the 48 for the completion with six seconds and a timeout called by the Panthers with six seconds to play. And Dan called it. It was a pretty good pickup. Uh, their second touchdown or second first down pickup of the half for the Panthers. WPIAL Championship Football is brought to you by Waynesburg College, where opportunities begin. Rollerblade and Rupp's Hockey Supply, two locations in Pittsburgh, south in Mount Lebanon and north, across from the Ross Park Mall. By Instant Replay Video Productions, for all your video needs. And by Powerade, the official sports drink of the WPIAL. And if you're my nephew, you call that pow aid. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got first and 10 at the 50 with six seconds left. St. Clair has two timeouts left. They have a pretty good field goal kicker in Hawkins, but they're going to need about 30 yards for him to kick a field goal. But it's something to think of. The problem in high school is even if you throw it deep, throw it up for grabs and look for an interference it's not at the spot of the foul it's a, it's a yardage penalty so you don't get that advantage like you get in the pros mm -hmm. well it'll be interesting we, we talked about it before coach render as you see him uh, heading off the field do you see the back of him anyway he's uh he's quite an offensive innovator and uh, this is a pretty varied upper st Clair offense see if maybe he has something he wants to try from midfield but is the lone back behind mccardle here First and ten, just six seconds, though. Stein streaking down this side. McCardle's going to tuck it in. He's got a couple guys open. A couple of pumps. He's going to run out the clock, though. He, he can't run for the touchdown. So that's going to end the first half of play. 
It's the best spot to find out what's going on in the world of sports. The Press Box on top of all the action. Highlights, scores, interviews, and the inside scoop on the deals of the day. Tune into the box. Imagine a world where the music perfectly fits the way you feel. With the flawless sound of a great CD, music of your choice, and no commercials, ever. You can live in that world now. It's called your home. You can create that music. It's called Music Choice, the definitive music service direct to your stereo. Let over 30 different channels of music wash all over you. Music Choice, the next great sound wave. When Walt Maddox was growing up in Pittsburgh, he had a dream to perform, to entertain. Walt's dream came true. Now he's helping kids wake up their dreams with an exciting school assembly program designed to make students realize dreams can be destroyed by using drugs or alcohol. Thanks to the Pittsburgh Automobile Trade Association and area car dealers, Walt's program will continue to reach and influence thousands of kids this year. Today's car dealers are doing more than selling cars. They're involved. Feel it today. We'll see if the Panthers can get it going here in the second half. Zakia to kick it off for Penn Hills. And how about that? Mike White at 295 pounds is on the kickoff team for Penn Hills. He runs right down the middle of the field. And he moved well. It's uh, Daly who finds room. And he's across the 35 to 40. And 45-yard line. A nice return. Upper St. Clair in business at their own 46, Dan. And that's a positive start for Coach Rinders Panthers. That's a real positive stop. And a great job of blocking, too. They created a nice little seam for him up the middle. Then he saw some daylight on the outside, showed some good speed. Here it is again. You see, they tried to break the wedge up, but he made a nice cut here, and there's the lane. Right. And then he sees it outside, and he has good speed, switches the ball over correctly, gets around the corner, and picks up about 15 more yards. That's a good start to the second half for St. Clair. A nice block by Colin Hawkins, the middleman on the return. So Mac McCarter will split backs behind him first and ten. We'll see what the Panthers offense has in store. Start the second half. It's Hawkins on the pitch for the first time tonight out of that split backfield position. He's wrapped up by Jeremy George quickly and just barely got back to the line of scrimmage before they blew it dead. Well, there was a missed block, and I'm not really sure who missed it. I didn't get the number, but the pitch was there. And I, I believe it was the guard or the tackle pulled, and for some reason he just didn't block the Penn Hills defender there and left Hawkins all by himself out there. Yeah. If he would have gotten that block, he could have cut inside and had some room to run. Junior Ron Graham helped run him down. He and Jeremy George on the play for the Penn Hills defense, and it's been a great defense so far tonight. Second and a very long nine for McCardle. He goes over the middle to Eric Render, and the pass is complete for a pickup of about seven yards on the play. Almost eight. They got a good spot there. They'll mark it inside. That's the, the play that I was, 48. Sean, that was the play I was saying should be open in the first half because they're really bringing their linebackers, and uh -huh. really the only person back there for Penn Hills is number 40, and he's the only player back there. So if they just run the tight end consistently over the middle of the field, they should be able to pick up five and seven yards at a chunk. Yeah, Chiquilla, the safety, up to make the play. So it's going to be third and about three here for McCardle and the Panthers. One back. It's only uh, Hawkins back behind. That's Bob Bunn. He gets a fake. Blitz from the backside. McCardle in trouble. Oh, tried to get it to Hawkins. It falls incomplete. Hawkins covered on the play by number 19, Charles Britt. You see Bunn go down as... Oh, you got to hope he doesn't pull a muscle on that. He slipped on what appears to be the wet paint there as uh, do on the field at this point of the evening. It wouldn't have mattered, though. Garrett Livingston was coming from the other yeah. side, and again, he was unblocked. Another linebacker blitz that nobody picked up. Curtis Crawford came from the near side as well. And the punt is a good one. And it's going to roll down inside the five-yard line, and uh, David Nicholas has uh, picked up the punting duties for Upper St. Clair. It's the second time in a row he's punted the football. The junior, and they're going to down it at the five. Penn Hills will start off on offense when we come back. Hi, this is Rod Woodson of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you're watching Prime Sports KBL. A story of tradition, emotion, victory, heartbreak. A story of a small town. A small school, 
a great team, and one shining season in college basketball. A story of unfinished dreams. Call 1-800-421-1696 to purchase a home video copy or for a sales outlet near you. Unfinished dreams. The 1969-70 St. Bonaventure basketball season. This holiday, they say alcohol-related crashes will kill and injure hundreds of people. Let's disappoint them. Designate a driver. About 90 years ago, we added something to this that made it absolute. First and ten at their own five. Panthers in need of a defensive stop here, but the give on the, it's to the fullback on the first play. Now that's the tailback, Dwayne Thompson, on the carry, and he's busted out across the 10-yard line for a good uh, eight-yard pickup, and it's going to set up second and short, Dan. It was an opportunity here for Upper St. Clair to stop and pick up some field position. Exactly similar to what happened to Penn Hills in the first half. They picked up a couple first downs, punted St. Clair down into, you know, bad field possession, but they were able to hold St. Clair. Now St. Clair has to hold Penn Hills. Thompson now over 100 yards on the night, rushing at 106. His uh, first down is picked up. For St. Clair, a bit of a missed opportunity, though it's not over yet. Penn Hills is not out of there. No. They're still at their own 15-yard line. Not by any stretch. They just need to buckle down on this series right here. Here you see it, 20 rushes for 109 yards. Blitz Strader at halftime had 62 yards on only 13 carries. Strader and Thompson with one touchdown each here in this game. The give is, uh, Gilmore gives it again. This is Strader, though, over the right side. He picked up about five on that carry. David Nicholas, the linebacker, who also uh, we just noted was in as a punter, oh, helped to make the play from the backside. Doug Blinn gets the first hit on him. He actually pulls him down, and Nicholas just comes over late. Nicholas and Bob Bunn are. Uh, I think Bunn. I think you're going to see a long run here, Sean, because now St. Clair is starting to sell out on the run. You know their linebackers are coming, and if a Penn Hills back is able to break you through the line of scrimmage, there's a lot of room. Strader almost broke that one, but he just. Got enough to get the first down as he was forced out of bounds on the far side by Pete Phillips and Colin Hawkins. Keith Grover, number 59, in there on the defensive line, also helped to run outside there. He and Olshansky. There's more speed on the uh, Panthers' defensive line. They're trying some different tactics here. I think, uh, of course, they did lose a player in the first half in Justin Bear, but it looks like a little less size and a little more speed. See how that'll work against this big uh, Penn Hills offensive front. Strader now up to 73 yards for the game. They still do have big Jason Basson in there, but Grover and Olshansky, the men in the middle for Upper St. Clair. As they try the middle once again, does Penn Hills. And it's uh, the fullback this time. This really has to be frustrating for Coach Render yeah. because now they're bringing everybody. The backers are coming, and Penn Hills is still picking up yardage. Garrett Livingston got three on that one. That'll set up second and seven at their own 31-yard line for the Indians. Looking for their first WPIAL championship since 1979. Quarterback keeps it. Gilmer around the end, and he can't run the football. He fact, picks he's, up. He's run for almost as much yardage as he has thrown. That's his 45th carry of the season. He's over 130 yards game. He's close to a first down. They're going to measure you see Gibson just straight on blocking. That time he missed his guy, but the play was going the other way. Really going away from him. He didn't play much of a part in that, in that play. Let's see as they bring the sticks out whether or not he made the first down here. And it is very short. It's, it's a uh, third and short. Yep. So this is a big down here for the Upper St. Clair defense if they could force Penn Hills to punt, obviously, trailing by two touchdowns. They'd love to do that here and maybe pick up some yardage in the uh, field position wars. And a first down here would be awful tough with 7.24 to play here in the third quarter. Penn Hills two for seven on third down attempts. They haven't had many third down attempts. They've been picking up first downs on, yeah. on first and second. Upper St. Clair with everybody up at the line and they'll go over the right side, Penn Hills will, and get the first down. Yeah. 
That's Dwayne Thompson on the carry from his tailback spot as he follows the blocks of his lead backs and Gibson. Gibson didn't really hit anybody there, Dan. He just that's a couple plays where he's just kind of been losing his balance. I wonder if it's speed. Well, I haven't I haven't seen Ronnie Graham come back onto the field. Yeah. He got hurt on the last play of the first half. He's usually the lead blocker. And I don't think he's let me see if he's in there now. Well, now he, I see him in there. Yeah, I was gonna say he made the tackle there he is. on the Upper St. Clair's first series. He he blitzed and okay. he and George made the tackle on that Hawkins, that quick pass to Hawkins or pitch to Hawkins on the outside. He limped off pretty good at the end of the first half. He right. seems to be all right now. Pick up there of about three yards. That'll set up second and seven for Penn Hills at their own 42-yard line. Lock turning under six and a half minutes to play third quarter. Damian Germany split to the far side of the field, but kind of inconsequential with the way Penn Hills runs the football. Is Andy Tackett's up to make the play there with some help from Matt Ellis. Again, uh, they made a couple big plays late in the first half, and number 42 and 45, or 45 and 42, Tackett is 45. 5'10", 170-pound senior. But if you're Thompson and Strader, you'd much rather go one-on-one -on -one with a cornerbacker or a safety rather than right. a linebacker or defensive tackle. Matt Ellis playing the corner on the near side and attacking the outside linebacker down here. Third and six for the Indians. Option pitch. And there's a loose foot by Bob right Martin has it. And Dan, that could be the break that Coach Render and the Upper St. Clair Panthers have been looking for. Well, that's a big break. It's kind of strange to see him run the option. I don't recall them running that at all so far, but here you see it. Nomar's pitch is a little bit behind Thompson. He couldn't handle it. it. It wasn't a good pitch, but it could have been handled. And again, the ball, once it hits the turf, you never know where it's going to go, and it bounced into the St. Clair's defender's hands. And now they got a good opportunity to close the gap. So up to St. Clair, first and 10 at the Penn Hills, 35. Tim Stein in motion. McCardle on the counter play to Hawkins. Oh, he it. He's going to throw at the back. Oh, the play just tipped and then intercepted. And that's a touchdown for the Penn Hills Indians. 55 yards. A touchdown scored by number 85, DJ Dumatari, the defensive end. He picked it up and took it back. First miss came away to BJ. That ball just came right into his hands again. It was great pressure on the ball. We'll have to see if it was tipped or whether, I think as he was being tackled, he just couldn't get much on the ball. We'll have to take a look at tell. it. It appeared to me at first that it was tipped, and here we'll get a look at it. Here you see the pressure again. That's white. No, not that tipped. wasn't tipped. He, again, he just got tackled as he was throwing the ball and couldn't get anything behind it. Oh. Kind Merry of tough Christmas. to throw with a 295-pound guy no on your shoulder, huh? No doubt. Sakia on to attempt the extra point. It's up. And it's down. Blocked. <laughs> Didn't even get that one up, so Penn Hills leads it. 20 to nothing here with 5-10. Here, you see it again. Look, there's number 75, Mike White, just barreling through. Boom. Right to him. He had uh, Bob Bunn sneaking out. They faked it to Hawkins and tried to get it to Bunn. And Bunn was open and he had blockers. Dean Natale off to the races. Puts Penn Hills up 20 to nothing with 5-10 to play in the third quarter of this WPIAL Quad A Championship game on Prime. We'll be back. Zakia's kickoff taken by Jason Daly. He had a big run the last one. He's gonna throw up on the far side. Great move. He gets around the side of 30, the 35-yard line, and again, Upper St. Clair in good operating position for their offense. But uh, they had it. Uh, they had what looked like a great Christmas gift and just a great play by White. Indeed, Atali uh, really kind of soured the thing. That's now a late down hit. Touchdowns here, Dan. We got a late. Should have maybe been a flag there. It huh? definitely should have been a flag. He was <laughs> two <laughs> yards out of bounds when he got hit. I don't know what the ref was looking at. He was standing there watching it. Regardless, St. Clair starts from their own 32, 33-yard line. But as you said, John, they had a great opportunity getting the fumble. They were right back in this game. But unfortunately, the defensive pressure of Penn Hills, which has been the story all game, causes a turnover right back and an easy touchdown. High formation set to give us the Hawkins on the draw. 
And that's the second time that play's worked rather well as Helen Hawkins is second uh, sizable run of the night, really only. He gets it out about seven or eight yards out to the 38 yard line, across the 38, almost to the 39. It's gonna set up second and three here for Upper St. Clair. Well, again, this play should work. They put such good defensive pressure on them. A draw is a good way of counterattacking pressure from the linemen and the linebackers. You know, one, of the, one of the problems St. Clair has is they've gotten a little bit too fancy with the play fakes and, you know, the reverses and so forth. You know, McArdle's rolling one way, throwing back the other. They need to start doing things a little quicker. He's getting too much pressure on them. Solid block there by Matt Woodford, number 55, the junior. Hawkins picks up the first down out hit. across the 45-yard line. And he, he got drilled, as Dan said, good hit. Oh, man. And it was made by number 19, Charles Britt for Penn Hills. He's a quarterback. He's a junior. He's a backup quarterback for this team. He's also a hitter. Must be a flag on the play there. No, they're, oh, they're taking their time moving the sticks. Are they going to talk it on? Don't see a flag. Dead ball. Yep, there's a, comes a signal. Personal Dead foul. Ball. Personal foul. That's the defense. They got that one on the far yards. side, Dan. First down. That's going to take it 15 more. Upper St. Clair will be down on the Penn Hills 40, just like that. Well, I think they're a play late with that. But they're two yeah. plays late with that because that one looked clean. I'm not sure if that was if the something. call was on the tackle yeah, or we was something else that we didn't see. But. Right. See Coach Render and Tim Stein. The senior wide receiver flanker for Upper St. Clair brings the play in. Mac McCardle. Heads out to the far side. Got Jason Daly and Hawkins. Hawkins in the slot on the near side as Stein comes in motion. Daly's out of your picture, way to the bottom of the screen. McCardle wants to throw it on first down. And he's looking to Daly in the turn-in route. Pick up about eight, we'll see where they mark it. He had about an eight-yard reception. Jeremy George, though, pushing him back. Those are the kind of plays I think St. Clair needs to run, Sean. Nothing fancy, just roll them out to the right, bite them a couple seconds. Take the seven, eight yard gain, that's fine. Just work your way downfield. There you see the rollout. This time Mac has time to set up, yep. and he puts it right on the numbers. Where they've been getting in trouble is when he's been faking twice to both backs or, or rolling right and coming back to the left. They just need to run things a little quicker because he doesn't have the time tonight, and he's not going to have it. Penn Hills is just putting way too much pressure on him. Right, and with that, uh, Penn Hills defensive coach Tim Timko wants to talk about it. They've taken a timeout here. Their first of the second half with 3.46 to play in the third quarter. Penn Hills leading Upper St. Clair 20 to nothing. Harbor Chevrolet Geo Buick, the price fighter on Route 51 in Belle Vernon. Second and four for the Panthers at the 34. McCardle fakes the pitch and goes deep. Has Eric Render that should be an like early hit in the flag. The official went down. That's a good flag call. Came out and it's going to be an interference call. Upper St. Clair, not first and goal because it's 15 yards in high school. Boy, if this were the pros, they'd really be in good shape, Dan. Yeah, it is, and really, if you're a defender and you're beating high school, that's what you should do. Yeah. You know, just go after the guy and tackle him because, again, it's a yardage penalty and not at the spot of the foul. I never understood that rule. I, I think it's crazy because he's clearly beat on this play. McArdle throws a beautiful ball, and if it, not for the interference. Would have been a touchdown you know, for Eric Render or, instead, uh, yeah, or at least the I mean, that's what you should do if you're on in the, the secondary defense, in high school. Just tackle yards, him, and he was beaten. That's exactly what he did. Victor Strader in the coverage. Render got behind him, but uh, Strader was quick enough to catch up enough to knock him down. You know, instead of getting the ball at maybe the four or five yard line, you know, they're on the 19 yard line. So, actually, a good play by Penn Hills to prevent the long, long pass. High formation set, first and ten at the 19 for the Panthers. Down three touchdowns. Hawkins on he the gets outside. He's got room. Following big Jason Bissot, he's, he's got in. first down. He's got oh, four, didn't three, it. two, <laughs> and he's shut down at the one-yard line. But what a run! The longest run of the game for Colin Hawkins, an 18-yarder. Sean, if you remember earlier in the game, I said they were in that play and they missed the block. Well, that time they made the block. Right. And that time Hawkins did what he, the play is designed to do: cut inside the defensive end and cut it upfield. Here you see it. Here's the key block. You see the lineman pulling right there. That's the block. 
that enables him. Now he's just trying to get that big number 75. Jason Besson. Jason Besson out of his way, and Jason goes downfield and creates some problems. And a nice play. Again, that's the difference between making that kickout block and missing it. 6'8", 270, and he's a junior. Full house backfield for Upper St. Clair. Bob touchdown. Bunn's going to take it in for the touchdown. Dan Emmerich was in there at the right half. Bunn gets the one-yard touchdown run for Upper St. Clair. That's something that touchdowns on the season yeah. for him. Yeah, if you've shot at St. Clair, that's something they like to do. Bunn gets the ball a lot around the goal line for his eighth touchdown. That's good blocking right there. Straight on blocking. Tackle did an excellent job clearing out the way. Hawkins' extra point attempt is up, and it's good. Upper St. Clair is on the scoreboard here with three minutes to play in the third quarter, and we had a feeling that this wasn't going to be completely uh, uh, as the first half went in this game. It's 20-7. to 7. They're back in it with three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Of course, they weren't out of it, but now they're on the scoreboard to have a little bit of offensive confidence. Got the big boost from Penn Hill's penalties. Four times they've been penalized in this game already for 48 yards, and that's... Uh, going to haunt them, or at least it's haunting them so far. Well, St. Clair is a powerful offensive team. It was just a matter of time till they broke something open. Again, with a good quarterback and a good running back, you're due to break something. That time, both the quarterback, McArdle, made some nice plays on that drive, and then the big run from Hawkins. So, you know, the passing opened things up a little bit. They hit Render down the middle. The deep pass stretched the defense, and then they were able to slide Hawkins down the middle and outside. So Hawkins will kick the football off here with Dwayne Thompson deep to receive it. The middle man standing at his own six yard line. Victor Strader on the far side, Damian Germany on the near side, number two. That miss, mixed, missed extra point might uh, mean something down the stretch here, Sean, again, Thompson. it's only 20 to six. Yeah, and Germany uh, falls down to lose, obviously, as soon as his knee touches. So Penn Hill's gonna start out their own 17 yard line as Hawkins gets the line drive. It was tough to handle. Germany kind of fell on it. And uh, gives the opportunity again for that upper St. Clair defense, which is playing better here in the second half and ever since really the second quarter. Yeah, about midway through the second quarter, they made some adjustments. Probably the biggest was slowing Penn Hills down on first down. They, you know, they've stopped them early in this series. Again, they're only down 13 points at 20 to 7. Split backs. Here comes Strader on the pitch. Uh, he's got room. Nice he's run. Up about eight yards on the play before Hawkins and David Kern help from Matt Ellis able to force him out on the near side. What's impressive about Penn Hills is as big as they are when they pull these linemen white and the other guys are still able to get outside and get in front of these fast halfbacks. Kind of curious and I don't know if you're able to tell but the Panthers alternating outside linebackers on the near side tactics and Tadaro and I don't know it's not play by play although tactics just comes in for this play maybe it's yarded situation I'm not sure as to what they're doing. But, yeah. you know, we talked about their defense improving. They've also made some changes on the defensive line as Kern was able to make the stop there, but not uh, before Victor Strader was able to pick up the first down for Penn Hills. It's at the 33. The Indians on the roll once again as uh, you see Matt Ellis go to the bench being replaced by big number 70, Greg Corzin. So they add another defensive lineman to the Panthers. Six-man front. And they give us the fullback, and they went uh, short yardage, and it worked. Corson at the bottom of the pile. Able to bring down the fullback, Garrett, Liv Garrett uh, Livingston. Yes, I, was, I had the right idea in the first place. <laughs> well, you're right. They're just changing it up. They're changing personnel a lot. They're coming with a six-man front. You know, the risk you take in coming with a six-man front is it opens up around the ends. And if you're Penn Hills, you want to audible to something wide. I maybe they're trying to make give Glenn Gilmer some different looks. It's second and eight here. He goes to the tailback, and I don't know if that was a face mask, but that was, a, if it wasn't, that guy's got awful strong hands. I was going to say, I hope we have a replay on that, because he reached out and grabbed something. Pulled him down with one hand. Maybe Doug just Glenn got him above the shoulder hand. pad. Watch number 85 here. No, not 85. That's it. His shoulder pad. Good play. Jason Besson. Well, I guess when you're 6'8", 270, you're a pretty strong man. Yeah. And, uh, the big tackle, Junior made the play, and that sets up third and four here for Penn Hills. 1.15 to play in the third quarter. 
The Panthers need a stop defensively. Penn Hills needs a first down to keep things going. They're not going to get it. Good stop. Raider dropped. Corzin, Greg Corzin, number 70, in his defensive line spot, the senior, 230-pounder, slashed behind him and cut him down. So Zakia's going to have to punt the football and a little momentum swinging up for St. Clair's way here, Dan. Yeah, and what's been impressive about it is the momentum turned after the interception for the touchdown, and they were down 20 nothing. Again, we mentioned how they've been in this game before. They might not panic. Right. I think most teams would have right then. Flag on the play, and I believe that'll push the Indians back another five yards. The whistles blew before the play started. Somebody jumped. Dead ball foul. Ball start. Illegal motion. On the offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. Against Penn Hills, and that's fifth, over 50 yards of penalties now. Against Penn Hills. Something you don't see a lot of Jim Render teams doing. No, you don't. Of course, he doesn't tolerate it very well, as most coaches don't. Uh, you don't get to the championship that many times in a row, but, right. you know, fourth and a lot nine. of penalties. I'm sure Coach Gordon doesn't like it either. There's a low punt, and Hawkins fields it on the run. He's across the 50 and into Penn Hills territory to the 45. That was just a great play by Hawkins. To feel I mean, that. To feel it, to pick it off, you know, off his shoe tips, because, again, if that ball bounces, it's gone. And in addition to making the catch, here's the catch. Hard you know, low. he still is able to pick up 15 yards on the return. So that's a great play by Hawkins. He broke the tackle of a big fella. Corey Connors had him around the hips, and... Hawkins, you talked about it. If he gets moving a little bit, he can break tackles. He broke one there and sets up Upper St. Clair first and 10 at the Penn Hills, 45. With 20 seconds to play here in the third quarter, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. High formation set behind McArdle, Bunn and Hawkins. Daly split the other way. They fake it to Hawkins. McArdle wants to throw it. He's got Tim Stein in the middle of the field. Open. He caught it. Oh, man. What a catch. <laughs> Tim Stein, first and goal, up his safe player. And, it, you know, as I said, he was open. Penn Hills really reacted nicely on the play. Number 19, Britt got there in time. And Strader was back in coverage. I mean, they were there. Stein just wanted the football more. The ball was just a little bit underthrown, but give McCardo credit for giving his receiver a chance. But you can see the defenders there. Then he gets help. That's From the other side, yeah. he comes over, and there's really two defenders there. Yeah. Stein just went up and got the ball. A great play. Thompson, Britt, all there. And Stein wanted it, so at the end of the third quarter, Upper St. Clair in scoring position, down by two touchdowns in the Quad A championship game. We'll be back. Boat accident, nice street bridge. Okay, we'll get 12 minutes of football here to go in this WPIL Quad A championship football game between the Panthers of Upper St. Clair and the Penn Hills Indians. And Upper St. Clair has been here now. This is our fifth year seeing them here. They've been here seven out of the last eight seasons. They've won the title in two of those. And they're looking for it, making a dent into that Penn Hills lead here because they've got first and goal at the Penn Hills three-yard line here to start the fourth quarter. And it was Tim Stein, just a terrific catch. Well, Sean, when you get to a game of this magnitude, people have to make plays. Someone has to come through, and Tim Stein just came through big time to make that play. He sure did. McCardle, you saw him on that right replay right before we went to the commercial, but he left his feet and threw that ball yeah. so hard. Full house backfield again. It's going to go to Hawkins. He's in. He's going to bang it in there. It's a new game. Three-yard touchdown run. And as Dan said, we've got a new football game with the extra point attempt coming here. Hawkins will be kicking it. And if he makes it, it's a 20 to 14 football game with plenty of time. We're just under with that was three seconds off the clock. So we got a whole quarter of football to go. It's a lead back. There's a fake to the fullback. Fun. And there it is to yeah. Hawkins. And right good. There. That was really, uh, that's blocked. <laughs> that's the point attempt there you see up and no Great good. Play. As it was blocked by the Penn Hills defense. But this sets up a real wild finish, does it not? With uppers for both teams having missed an extra point. It's a 20 to 13 football game. 
Here's the touchdown. They did the same time. They really did the same thing the last time they scored a touchdown. They went over right tackle. He owned his man on the last touchdown, and yeah. he owned his man on this one. McCardle, three for four for 55 yards this half. Again, the Stein catch really added to that. That yeah. was 43 of those yards. Also, a big block by number 85, Doug Blinn, the tight end on the right side. It was in there in the two tight end set for Upper St. Clair. Great job of Penn Hills to block that kick, though. It sure was. And, uh, I didn't see who got their hand on it. I don't know uh, if it was we were a little 86, bit. Walter Jackson or not, but... At 5'8", 143, I don't know. But if it was, it was an 80, it was a high 80 number, I'm guessing Graham at 6'4 would have Maybe. had a better shot at it. Who knows? Or B.J. Di Natale at 6'2". Whomever it was, it was a big play. It, it was them, one of them guys in red out there. Yeah, they did a nice job. Colin Hawkins set to kick it with Dwayne Thompson back to return it. Hawkins isn't going to let him do that. He's going to go to Germany again, this time on the hop. Actually, that's not Germany. He was replaced at Strader. They switch sides. Strader returns it. Gets to about the 24 before the upper St. Clair coverage team pushes him back. So Penn Hills now, Dan, we talked about it all game long, how upper St. Clair was going to have to do something offensively. Penn Hills with 11.50 to go in this game, leading by seven. Needs to do something offensively to turn the momentum. I think one of the things they have to do is to go back outside. I think St. Clair has adjusted between the tackles. As I said, they've been playing a lot of six-men fronts, and that, to me, leaves the outside vulnerable, and I think they should start trying to kick the ball outside again. Strader and Thompson in there. Big Corey Connors in at fullback. Number six. He's, a and he's wide open. Number 33. I Jeremy mean, George running wide open. Wide open. Field. The Panther defensive backs were sucked in by the uh, run fake. Hawkins and Stein just let George run free. There you see, no one's even looking at him. Then it's like, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh, it's right. You see that big uh, Buffalo backfield the, these uh, Penn Hills Indians went with there. I believe that is. That's number 69 lined up at fullback. They got two big guys now there as well as 89. And there's the give to Thompson. He's going to pick up a couple. But that's going to set up third and long here for the uh, Penn Hills Indians as Upper St. Clair was still able to stop that up. Jason Passan at the bottom of the pile, the big fella, holding his ground along with some help from Greg Corson for Upper St. Clair. This is going to be an interesting position here for Coach Gordon, Dan, a third and eight and, you know, when they need a first down. Yeah, and I think they're going to run the ball again. Split backs, Livingston and Strader. They give us a Strader. He's going to come. He's got room. He's got first down yardage and more. He's That's a late hit, too. Line. David Cohn's going to get called for it. That's, That's a good call. Be a big break. It's going to be down inside uh, Upper St. Clair territory all of a sudden. That's a big Dead play, ball. Sean. You know, we're talking third and eight. Personal foul, late There you hit. see him. He does get outside again. I yards. think that's vulnerable. First down. He picks up the first down. You can see he's clearly out of bounds. Yeah. It is tough to stop when you're coming full speed, but you have to do everything you can to avoid that because it's an easy call. Yeah, and you're trying to uh, you're going constantly full speed trying to slow these guys down. Damian Germany did a good job holding off Pete Phillips and just long enough for a straighter to make the move and pick up the first down. So it's first and 10, uh, Penn Hills at the Upper St. Clair 44-yard line. A straighter has gone over 100 yards, or I'm sorry, he's at 100 yards on 20 carries. Thompson back in there at tailback and the power eye set, he gets four on that play. Right up the middle. What a turnaround that third down play was. It was third and eight. They were on in their own about 32 yard line. You know, they pick up the first down and the penalty, and now they start on St. Clair's 44 yard line. Big turnaround. Second and six at the 40 here for Lynn Gilmer, the junior quarterback, who uh, has tried to throw two passes here tonight. Dan, one of them incomplete, the other one called back. He goes deep all the time. There's Strader on the counter. He goes up the middle for about four. Before the Panthers were able to kind of slow the, the moving pile. It, it's more, more so a moving pile when they go up the middle than it is a back run of the ball, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a mass of flesh. I mean, they just, you know, crowd everybody in there and just push you forward and 
you're a defensive lineman, you really have your work cut out for you. Third and three. Pendles needs to get to the upper St. Clair 34. Well, they're in four down territory, so they're going to have two downs to do it. Loss on this play as Strader is caught in the backfield. Came from the outside. Andy Tackett came from one side. Bob Bunn from the other. The linebackers able to make the play. And that's a great play because, again, if they're really proud in the middle and there's their you know, two lead blockers come from the come from the outside. Bring your outside backers, yeah. and that's exactly what they did. And they've got those big guys in the backfield leading the blocks. Well, they are going to punt. I'm kind of surprised. I thought they would go for it. Zakia set to punt the ball from his own 48-yard line. 38. Hawkins and Stein are from the upper St. Clair 40. Yeah. That ball's going to roll dead about the oh, it's not gonna, yeah about the eight yard line here. So Upper St. Clair will take over from there when we come back. Down by seven points with 8.46 to play. There are only two realities in the world of sport. The real world and the virtual world. Sport, where reality and virtual reality meet. A new interactive exhibit now taking on all challenges at the Carnegie Science Center. Sponsored by Prime Sports and TCI. Sport, just play it. position here, Dan. First and ten in his own nine-yard line. They need a drive to tie this game up, and they've got plenty of time to do it. McCarl the throw on first down. Hits Daly on the near sideline and is out of bounds for a completion, but a pickup of about eight yards and some breathing room offensively. Sean, tough decision by Coach Gordon on that last fourth down. They had about fourth and three to go for the first down. This is what St. Clair needs to do, a quick drop. Yep. You know, a little six-yard out pattern. Just nickel and dime your way down the field. It's almost a nine-yard pickup. It's, we'll, get, we'll make it eight. It's going to be second and two here for the Panthers. It's a short two, though. Daly split to the near side. Eye formation set behind McArdle. Pete Phillips in motion. Hawkins on the counter. Has room. Across the 20 and out of bounds. Forced out by Garrett Livingston for Penn Hills, but not before Cullen Hawkins has the upper St. Clair first down at the 22. Little delay of a handoff to give the right guard and right tackle time to pull. They came around the corner leading Hawkins, did a good job still in the corner. He picked up the first down. Cameraman J.C. Smith kind of bailed out. Of he didn't want to take on Hawkins. I can't say that I blame him. J.C.'s not quite the six foot 180 pounds that Hawkins is. But a first down for St. Clair gives him a little bit of breathing room. Stein and Render switching. Fake to Hawkins. Quick pass to Bob Bunn, the fullback with the reception. Another first down across the 33 yard line out to about the 34. A nice quick uh, play, another quickie, Dan. They're, they're just throwing the quick short ones as you talked about. Yeah, and a good job by Coach Render today of really changing things. You know, they, they had trouble defensively early on. They corrected some of that. They had trouble offensively in the first half. Well, they've changed things. You know, they're throwing short patterns, thrown to the back, throwing square outs. You know, so good job of coaching during the game to, to get your team out of some rough spots. You know, we've talked about it, that Penn Hill's a team with the greater speed, but, you know, these, these defenders are always chasing upper St. Clair receivers. These plays very well designed as Bob Bunn came out of the backfield for that reception in front of Garrett Livingston. This is Hawkins. Another big pickup for him as he's got 13 yards. And Cullen Hawkins, the senior for upper St. Clair, 1,600 yards this season, and he's moving up on 1,700 after a slow first half, he's starting to wake up a little bit and get some room to run, Dan. Again, a nice kick out block on the defensive end. Seals the corner. He cuts it upfield, breaks a tackle there to pick up five more. Runs through another tackle to pick up three more. Sean, really the key is, as we said before the game, St. Clair has nice balance. They just didn't get the ball very much in the first half. Right. Penn Hills dominated. They had the ball the whole first half. 
now they've had the ball in the second half and the balance is really starting to confuse Penn Hills. They're on their heels a little bit. They're not sure if they're going to throw the ball, run the ball, and I think their ability to throw the ball has opened things up for Hawkins. You know, what, do you, what would Yogi Berra say, deja vu all over again, or somebody said something like that somewhere along the line, but weren't we in this position last year, Upper St. Clair driving, 7-18 exactly. to play in the game, trailing a great McKeesport team, they're a touchdown behind here against uh, Penn Hills, 20-13 to is the score, you are watching WPIAL Championship Football on Prime, and it's being brought to you by Computer Tech. Prepare for your career in the computer industry at Computer Tech, where you earn a specialized associate degree in just 18 months. First and 10 Panthers, Jason Daly split to the near side. With Stein, the flanker on the far side. It's the Hawkins on the counter. He's across the 50 and into Penn Hills territory for a pickup of about four yards on first down. Sean, it, cores in the block, huh? it is similar to last year's game because McKeesport was dominating St. Clair early in the game. It was the same kind of situation. St. Clair had to start changing up things, and then they made a late charge like they're doing again tonight. Hawkins came up a little gimpy after that tackle off the seat. as he's uh, kind of tender coming out of tender footed coming out of the huddle here. Split backs here on second and six for the Panthers. I don't know if that was an audible by Mac or not, but Render turned around to look at uh, Hawkins a little bit. The little flare pass incomplete as Hawkins didn't catch the football. Garrett Livingston ready to there to uh, read him if he had. Yeah, and I think he thought uh, that Livingston was there because he took his eye off the ball. He looked upfield a little too soon. He knew someone was coming. That sets up a third and six now for the Panthers. It's a real long six. They need to get all the way down to the Penn Hills 43 for a first down from just the inside the 50. And again, they're in a predicament of whether they they have two downs to get the first or are they going to punt if they don't get it here. Let's see what happens on Six third down. Six minutes to play. Phillips comes in motion. Daly split to the top of the screen. McCardle's looking to throw. And he can run for he it. He can run for it. Can he get to the first down marker? He's got the first down marker. He's going to hold on to it this Hawkins time, I bet. does not lose the football, and you saw Eric Render signal it. It's a first down upper St. Clair inside the Penn Hills 40. Sean, the play was designed left. It was a three-step drop. McArdle was looking to the left side. Nobody was open, and he rolled right. Here you see it. Just a quick drop. One, two, three. He's looking right there. Nobody's there, so he knows I'm in trouble. I better get out of this pocket. And then there was plenty of room around the right side. He got faster all of a sudden. Did you see that? He's a good runner. You know, we've, we've seen him during the course of the year. He's got good speed and good moves. Yeah. He's a tough kid, too. You can see him plowing ahead for a couple extra yards. Just 5'10", 160 pounds, but a lot of that is heart. First and 10 Panthers is Hawkins. He's got, got room. He's got a lot of room. Eric Linder, he's got a block. He tripped over Eric's foot, though, and went down in just inside the 15, but a pickup of... 15 yards. Sean, hard to believe, but Upper St. Clair now has more total yards than Penn Hills. Yeah. They've gotten a lot of wow. mileage out of this counter tray where they just kick it out. And there you see Render. See if he trips over his foot right there. Yeah. He probably wouldn't have gotten too much more yardage anyway. But right. Now all of a sudden, Cullen Hawkins has become a factor. 14 rushes for 89 yards. You talked about the uh, changes they made. There's a tight end leading on that counter play yeah. instead of the tackle. So the Panthers are mixing things up offensively. First and 10 at the Penn Hills, 25. Pete Phillips in motion. Looked like Render moved a little early, but no call. Same play. Hawkins picks up four. Well, counter tray is a good play to run against an aggressive defense because yeah. you're really suckering the defense into pursuing and as soon as that defensive end comes up field you know someone pulls and knocks him out of the way yeah you don't pull everybody too much so watch uh, number 89 Ronnie Graham the outstanding linebacker the junior from Penn Hills who was able to get Hawkins after the four yard gain oh, that's 28 I was had the wrong guy 28 made the play that's Livingston and he's been all over the field tonight yeah he sure has been he doesn't get the notoriety of some of the other players on this team but he's a heck of a football he's player the other inside linebacker second and seven yards he gave him a long three for Hawkins there's a give to bunt up the middle that's the first time they popped anything of sizable note up the middle he just got pushed back by Dina Tolley and Ronnie Graham but 
decent pickup for the fullback. And see the Panthers, uh, rooters on the stands there, kind of shaking things up here at Three Rivers. That's a good play to run. You know, you want to make the defense stay awake and keep aware of your fullback. But again, they're in a tough spot. It's third and about five. From the 19, and as Dan talked about, they're in four down territory now. We're under five minutes to play in this football game. It's an interesting call here. Phillips and Brenner switch sides. Great fake. McCardle's going to run for it again. He had to jump over a blocker. Great course and just on right, there. Fumble. Football is loose. And Penn has has the football. Yeah, it's a shame. He should have just but. gone to the carpet because he had the first down. But he just kept dancing around until finally he lost the I'm football. See who knocked it out. A great play by the Penn Hills defense. But it is a shame because, yeah. as you can see, he has the first down. It's a good move there to get away from the Penn Hills defender. And here's where he starts getting a little too cute. You know, he could have just gone down and gotten the first, but he's fighting hard, and there you see it stripped. Nice play, Damian Germany. The defensive back, Flanker, is limping off the field. Uh, comes off after making a big play. 4.19 to go in this one. Power eye set for Penn Hills as they want to run this clock out. They'll go right up the middle and try to do it that way. And they Great pick up run. Nine yards on the first down play. And that's Dwayne Thompson. Well, this is a championship time right now. And if Penn Hills wants to win this championship, all they have to do is to hold on to the football and pick up some first downs. St. Clair has all three timeouts. That was Upper St. Clair's third turnover tonight. They've all been costly. They have that. to begin a big hole. It's almost like the air has gone out of St. Clair sales. That was their last drive, and I just think they're down a little bit right now. Phillips and Stein able to save the touchdown from happening there, but you see these guys just get blown. You see Doug Glynn selling out. And Livingston, a great block a great for the block. fullback, huh? You know, he, number 85 for St. Clair, who is that Doug Glynn? He looks like he's got a wide open shot on yeah. the guy, and all of a sudden Livingston just blows him out of the hole. And Bob Bunn, the other linebacker, came through the wrong gap, or maybe not the wrong gap, but just wasn't in position to make the play and pick up for the first down. Pinnell's running the clock. We're down to about three, almost approaching three minutes to play in this game. It's, it's just hard to believe that Thompson and Strader will both be back next year. I mean, Amazing. again, they just break tackles constantly. And they're little fellows. Both of them only yeah. 170 pounds each. Uh, but they are tough runners, and they're fast. Strader in there, a tailback on this one. He gets the carry over the left side, but he's stacked up for a loss on the play. Panthers defense in there quickly. That's uh, they might want to start using some timeouts. The clock is 2:30 on it. They have three timeouts. It's going to be third down. This isn't a bad time to use one of your timeouts because really, if they get the first down here, you're in trouble. Thank it on them not doing that. Aaron Coe with the play from his defensive tackle spot on the last play. Four upper Sinclair, third and six. They're going to come wide. Strader has it. And a great play there. One-on-one -on -one tackle by Pete Phillips. Gets him at the line of scrimmage. And Pendles is going to have to punt it. Upper St. Clair calls timeout. Or no, we've got an injury timeout as it looks like Strader. Yeah, they're going to get away without having to use a timeout. 2.02 to play. The Panthers will get it back, apparently. Well, that's what I was saying. I think I would have used a timeout, you know, before this play. Great pursuit here. Yep, good pursuit, and you see Blinn coming up to force him, and Phillips somehow fighting off a block comes up and just drills. That was a great tackle. Victor Strader. Yeah, that's Strader's one thing. Whenever you're field, okay. That's, that's one way to always tackle a good running back. Down yeah. low, you got to get lower in him. You know, right at the legs. Take his legs out from under him. Pete Phillips, 165-pound senior, made a lot of tackles in this game, but none bigger than that one. Penn Hill should take their time. St. Clair didn't call timeout, and the clock is running. Down to 145. Is, yeah, I'd take a penalty. It looks like they probably are going to do that. Uh, some. Nope. They're going to play. They the just football. waited till the last second, though. Yeah. That was a good job by the them. Kia gets it off. Steinfield to the 35. Big hole. Yeah. Across the 50. 40. Oh, 
time he could drill. <laughs> Fourth and one yard line, and he was drilled. Oh, Don my. Kia with the hit. Oh, Donnie. <laughs> And so, with 1.29 to play in this football game, we'll see how it comes out. Upper St. Clair down seven with the football, 41 yards, or maybe tying it up. Right. Getting advance permission from landowners is not only courteous. Appreciate your call yesterday. Well, appreciate you letting us hunt here, Mr. Frank. It's a requirement of safe and responsible hunting. Have a good time. Thank you, Mr. Frank. See you on the way back. Remember, we treat Mr. Fry's property like it's our own. Because hunting safety isn't inherited. Yeah, right. You have to teach it. Let's go. Come on, come on. For more information on hunter education in Pennsylvania, call 717-787-7015. First and 10 up for St. Clair at the Penn Hills, 41. A minute seven to play. McCarver to the air, Pete Phillips. Oh, incomplete. Great defensive play. Inside the 10, great coverage on the play, and another shake it up, uh, Penn Hills Indian. He got his hand up there at the last second. I think that's Dwayne Thompson, the great running back, who was playing that side of the defense. Let's see the replay. McArdle puts the ball right on the numbers. It's a great throw. Perfect throw. Yeah, you see 22 Thompson last there second. just at the last That's minute to rip it out of his hands, huh? That's a game-saving play. Oh, man. But there's only 101 left on the clock. I just think St. Clair burned a lot of time. You know, on that yeah. third down of Penn Hills, there was 232 left on the clock. That's a toughie, yeah. You know, they ran the third down play, they punted the ball, and then St. Clair has run one play, and they burned up a minute 31 on the clock. They still have three timeouts, but... You see Thompson is up and okay, but uh, he'll have to come out for at least one play, I believe, or Penn Hills be charged for the timeout. Well, I think you know where you throw the ball this play. Yeah, I'd say down the right side. Huh? Yeah, you see who comes in. They got Stein in there replacing Phillips, who has to be winded after running that pattern. It was a great throw. The ball was right there, but just give Thompson all the credit in the world. That could have saved a Whitfield championship for him. Stein splits to the far side, daily to the near side. High formation set here on second and ten. 61 seconds to play. They can run a draw here. They fake they can it. Fake a draw too. McCardle up in trouble. Throwing back across the is field. Is that dangerous? It sure is, and it's picked up. Goodbye. From your words to his hands, Victor Strader. That'll do it. McCardle ran him down at the seven yard line. But that pass intercepted at the 32. He tried to get it to Eric Render on the throwback, but just too tough a play to make with a guy as fast as Victor Strader in the coverage. The ball hung up just a little bit too long. Warm up the bus. This one's over. With 43 seconds left, it appears that Penn Hills has won their first WPIAL championship since 1979. And it's been a long, tough battle for Neil Gordon well, it's as been, the head coach. It's been typical of Mac McArdle's night. He's trying so hard, yeah. maybe trying too hard, to make something when something's just not there. That's like a 35-yard pa pass play across the field. Yeah. And, you know, with when the speed the on Penn way. Hills, yeah, yeah, you're throwing across your body. I mean, he knows it. You know, he, everybody knows it. Again, he's just trying to make something happen. And that's, unfortunately, three of his turnovers turnovers tonight have been him just trying too hard. Thompson back in there on the carry, so he's obviously okay and will be fine to move on in the state playoffs with the uh, Penn Hills Indians. So he picked up four yards there on first down. It's going to be second and goal for Penn Hills outside the upper St. Clair and I would, yard line. I would think they're just going to let it run. You would think. 22 seconds to go on the clock as you see it in the top left corner of your screen. Not going to rub it in. What a great day of football, and what a great uh, championship this is for uh, Neil Gordon, Dan. It wasn't all that long ago that he was asked to resign by the school board at Penn Hills. As well, Penn Hill throws it down, and that's official. Well, Penn Hills is back, John. I mean, this was a powerhouse team in the, in the 70s and late 70s, and they had some rough going there in the early 1980s, but they are back. And no, that's not true. That's not the upper St. Clair Panthers. Yeah, there we go, the Penn Hills Indians. That's it.
But he has brought this team, he has brought this team back, Sean, in the early, when he took over 1987, he went 0 and 10, 1988, 3, 6 and 1, and then continually got better from that time period until they went 12 and 0 and won the Whipfield Championship in 1995. Let's make it 13. Yeah, we'll make it 13 and 0, exactly. 13 and they'll move on. So we're going to take a break here and come back with some post-game comments with Kevin Decker down on the field from the winning side and probably from Upper St. Clair as well. It's 20 to 13. Penn Hills, your quad A champs. There's a place where lovers go to cry their troubles away. And they call me Lonesome Town, where the yes! hearts stay. Yes! You can buy a dream. WPIAL championship football games have been brought to you by Allegheny General, Duquesne University Sports Medicine Institute. By Gillette, the best a man can get. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, the PG, makes the day for me. By Cameron Coca-Cola, always in the game, always Coca-Cola. And by Adelphia Cable Communications. What a quad eight championship game it was. It went all the way down to Mac McArdle's last gas pass. Back across the field intended for Eric Render. Victor Strader, who else, to intercept it? It was Strader and Thompson. It was their show here this evening, Dan, as well as the Penn Hills defense in the first half that got the Indians their 20 to 13 victory. Kevin Decker. With post okay, game we're with Victor Strader. Strader. Victor, big game for you on both sides of the ball. Uh, I know you're tired right now. Let's talk about that late interception to ice this game away. I was just hoping the receiver came back. I was just hoping he would throw it, and I, fortunately he did. I had tacked the box. He threw it high enough for me to get it. Now, early in the game, it was a big uh, touchdown that you scored early on. Describe it. I don't know. It was just clogged up. I just had to go over top. It's the only way there was to go in. It seemed like Upper St. Clair was doing a good job of blocking the middle of the field for you guys, trying to go either end around or right up the middle. They had a really good run defense uh, up against you tonight. It, they were The linebackers were shooting a lot, and they were pinching and stuff. They were trying to shut, shut down our run game. That's the main focus for them, shut down our run game. They was doing a good job. Now, this is uh, not the end of it for you. you. still got a few more games to go. Excited about the, uh, the prospects of going to States? Yeah, we're trying to take that, too. All right, congratulations. Back upstairs. Boy, Victor Strader had it right there. They sure have really done it. Uh, what a what a win for the Indians it was. And, uh, you know, he talked about Upper St. Clair. They've been here. The Indians were able to overcome everything Upper St. Clair threw at them. And he, as we knew they would, Coach Render's Panthers gave him a football game. Although when you look at things pregame we talked about, it, they're going to have trouble staying with this team. But down to the last minute again, Dan. Well they, well, they had their chances, Sean. Their last two drives, you know, they were in Penn Hills territory. Two turnovers cost them. But, I mean, a great performance by Penn Hills. You really have to be happy for the people of Penn Hills and Coach Gordon. As I said, they started this program off 1987-0-10. But, obviously, he put the building blocks in motion. You know, he must have gone out to the grade schools, got kids playing again. And those kids are now seniors and juniors now. Absolutely. And they're paying dividends. Absolutely. Well, Kevin Decker has uh, Neil Gordon, the winning coach down on the field. Take it away, Kevin. Head coach Neil Gordon, a big game, and it's been a long time coming for you. Well, you know, Ace Everling always tries to get the two best teams into the final, and I think he succeeded this year. Uh, St. Clair, heck of a team, uh, very well coached. We played well tonight. Uh, we made a couple mistakes to let them back in, but then made a couple big plays down the stretch to take it away. So uh, hats off to my kids. They beat a heck of a football team tonight. You had them pretty much in hand early on offensively, and then uh, they did make a little bit of a comeback. A little bit nervous there in the uh, in the fourth quarter at all? Oh, no, a little bit's the wrong word there. Uh, St. Clair, they, they, you know, last last week against Seneca Valley, Seneca Valley had them up, had them down 10-0, and they've kind of taken it to them. 
and there was just so much confidence uh, in the St. Clair team. And we were down 20 to nothing, but you didn't see them putting their heads down. Uh, they're confident they can win a game at any point. And I wasn't really confident until Victor picked one off and ran it down to the five. Now, normally you do the gradings in the paper. How do you grade it tonight? Well, grade A? I, I don't know how I'm going to grade the coaching, but uh, I'm going to grade uh, what it means to the school district in A, that's for sure. Coach, congratulations, and it was a long time coming, and I know how happy you are about this. Yeah, Go celebrate. I really am. Thank you very much. Okay. Head coach Neil Gordon, of Pat. Let's go back upstairs. WPIAL Championship Football brought to you by the International Culinary Academy, where you, you earn a specialized associate's degree in a little as 18 months. We'll be back to wrap this up right after this. Hey, Steeler fans, now you can wear what the Steelers wear. The Prime Sports Catalog gives you inside access to the same team-issued jerseys, jackets, hats, and T-shirts found in an NFL equipment room. Don't be fooled by department store imitations. Wear the newest Pro-Line products. Call for your free Prime Sports Catalog at 1-800-804-PRIME or stop by our newest store location at Woodson's All-Star Grill at Station Square. Steeler fans, this is Rod Woodson. To dress like the pros, you don't have to play in the NFL. Just shop at Prime Sports, your Pittsburgh sports specialist. Sean Doherty and Dan Donahoe back with you here at Three River Stadium, a rapidly emptying Three River Stadium after the final uh, WPIL championship game is completed. There it is. It's Penn Hills beating Upper St. Clair 20 to 13 for the title. Dan, let's uh, let's put the final wrap on this one. Well, there's the final set, Sean, and 258 yards rushing for Penn Hills. But St. Clair's defense did a pretty good job after that first quarter. 110 of those yards were in the first quarter. The big one is the three turnovers. Yeah. Actually, it was four turnovers, two interceptions and two fumbles. But those, you know, if you talk to Coach Render tomorrow or tonight, what he's going to say is you can't beat a team like Penn Hills and turn the ball over four times. No, you can't do that. And you can't probably, even when you're in his shoes, can't beat a Penn Hills team like this without taking a few chances. They took them. Penn Hills made the plays. They did. They, they did. Got, it's, a, it's a super football team. They're big. They're, you know, they're quick. They got good speed. I mean, it's an excellent team to send to the state finals. And it's the Penn Hills uh, Indians who are happy here after this one. Upper St. Clair, another great season for them. Another great uh, final game here at Three River Stadium in the Quad A Championship. We want to uh, thank you folks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the telecast. We are uh, going to I want to thank a lot of the people who helped make this possible, including Chuck Heberling, uh, the uh, director of the WPIAL, and also the folks here, the great folks here at Three River Stadium, who make us feel so welcome. As you get to see the names at the bottom of your screen there, those are the folks who brought you these wonderful pictures all day long. And we thank them as well. Hey Remington, shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. The newest Remington Triple Foil. The only shaver with three micro screens now has a 50% greater cutting rate with a more powerful motor.